All right, so you've been saying some stuff on Twitter that I find to be a little bit stupid, uh, but it's like if you have better reasons for why you believe those than uh, the ones you've given online, I, I'd be happy to move my position here. Yeah, uh, but, sure, what's up? Yeah, so uh, I guess the, the most important one is, if you want, I can uh, pull the tweet up on my screen, and you can do it on yours, uh, and I can just read through it if you want. Yeah, just, yeah, you can read it out to me. Yeah, here you go. Uh, so you said uh, scalpers do add value, though. Uh, they make available consoles to people who couldn't otherwise be, uh, sorry, give me a second here, mm -hmm. couldn't be first in line to buy them. As supply increases slash demand falls, they'll obviously sell for less. But they'll still make a profit for the service they provide. Uh, this was in response to somebody else who's uh, with a minor in macro, uh, or at least who says they have a minor in macro, saying that they uh, that a scalper doesn't um, doesn't increase value. So do you think the kind of value they were talking about was like market value, or do you think it was like economic value or fair value? Um, I think the type of value that they were talking about is going to be some really silly idea that like the only type of value that exists is some material value. And since they're not actually like improving the actual good itself, that that doesn't count. But that's clearly ridiculous because there's tons of value that exists in society that's not just like an actual improvement, a physical improvement on a product. No, I completely agree that there are tons of ways in which like a, a, some kind of like end product, like a, um, like a, even a good or a service uh, could be like improved mm -hmm. through the, 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 um, um, through some aspect of it, which isn't a physical modification, right? Sure. And I don't think that's what they were they were uh, proposing either. I oh, think well, what in that case, then, then, the then case I would of, argue that the tweet is dumb, then, right? Because it seems obvious that some value is being provided here. People are willing to pay a lot more for something. It seems that seems to be obvious, unless there's some other type of value no. here that we're missing. Uh, but go ahead. So the willingness to pay more isn't being changed here. They're just being charged more, right? So the willingness to pay more is this the, what where we'd call like um if we're going to with like the sub, uh, the subjective theory of value, this is what value would be, right? Okay. And this is economic value. Okay. Uh, what they're probably talking about when like they refer to like um uh, things like this. They're probably talking about fair value, which is like in the case of arbitrage is like never modified, right? Um, so if we're if we're if we're gonna like, I'm sure you probably agree, right? Fair value in the case of arbitrage doesn't get modified, and this necessarily scalping is always a case of arbitrage. Um, can you? So I agree that scalping is always a case of arbitrage. Um, I explain to me the first part, or re repeat that first part again. Okay, did my audio cut out or something? Um, so I was what I was saying was like uh, in the case of like a scalping, mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a case of arbitrage. In the case of arbitrage, fair value is never changed. Right. Um, what do you, can you explain to me by fair value? Oh uh, yeah. So fair value is the idea that there's like some uh, there's some kind of like value to a product that exists outside of like the, the market value or like the price to it. Right. Uh, so you could you could use like economic value, which would be like the uh, the idea here would be like the value of an item is like the subjective assessment that like any individual economic actor sure. gives to could it. Something like um, accessibility be considered as part of a fair value. Uh, no, it would probably wouldn't be considered part of the fair value generally, but you might you might in some situations consider like the uh, the uh, the way in which it's like brought to you or like delivered to be part of the fair value. It seems to be pretty important because that's literally like the mm -hmm. case that we're talking about here, right? Because if that was the well, case, we're not actually because the availability is reduced, right? So availability is reduced by scalpers. That's not true though at all. Well, it is though. Scal scalpers have to buy the object from the producer to but then they resell, sell it right? back to the market, right? Correct. Yeah. So the availability is reduced by the scalper to the same degrees provided. If there are 1,000 consoles available and 500 are bought by scalpers and they sell, they resell those 500, is the availability being reduced? So if, if what you're saying is like the scalper, uh, the scalper both reduces it initially and then they then they uh, they uh, reintroduce it later, right? So it, it's a, like a net, there's net no change in availability, but it's initially like a reduction in availability, which weighs out any like uh, addition in availability. Um, okay, I think I can accept that uh, more nuanced take, sure. Yeah, so in the case of like va the, the value of a... Of a um, the, the value of an item here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can we can take about take a look at this and like in terms of availability, it seems like there's not really a huge reason to like believe that scalpers are like doing uh, doing much to add value there. But what they are doing, uh, what scalpers do, is uh, they uh, when it comes to like um, what you'd call like uh, I guess the uh, uh, the the post sale uh, the post sale aspects of like um, uh, of um, of a PlayStation that you might buy, right? So there are things like warranty uh, that, that wouldn't wouldn't be applying to scalpers. They wouldn't have to give you a warranty there. They're probably going to be selling the item as used at a much higher markup price. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, we're the delivery going, wait, 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 Go ahead. Quick. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're going through a bunch of weird... Um, okay, so I don't know what warranty has to do with any of this stuff here. I don't know if uh, consoles are normally sold with warranty. Um, if there's a manufacturer warranty, I imagine that's probably still going to be intact. Um, in terms of being sold used, I... I I guess it's possible. I've never in my life heard of a scalper selling a piece of hardware used. Uh, usually they okay, just so they usually buy them they, and they resell it immediately. Yeah, no, usually they do actually uh, sometimes list it used. But if, if you think it's like the uh, this isn't the case, then we could like go into like I guess uh, more about the aspects of like the uh, the the the, uh, the after sale value, right? 
So uh, I, 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 I don't think I don't think that. Um, yeah. For, yeah. Firstly, yeah, there are still going to be purchasable warranties, um, and, sure. and like a manufacturer warranty is still going to be implied, even if it's being sold to someone else. Secondly, um, I I just have to flat out reject because I don't know if it's going to be a point to your argument mm -hmm. later. I'm going to flat out reject that most of these are. When you say sold as used, do you mean actually used? Or do you mean like sold as used to like trick like an eBay like marketing algorithm? Okay, so I didn't say most of them. I said plenty of them are, right? Well, pl uh, okay, so this is very yeah. weaselly. What do you mean by plenty? Do you mean like 5% I mean, or do you I mean, mean like, like 80%? I mean like it's statistically, I mean like it's not weaselly. It's just like a statistically uh, significant portion. So we could probably say that it's like it's somewhere like uh, somewhere like um, uh, I, I I wouldn't have st uh, stats on hand, so I don't want to make strong claims here. Sure. But it's probably I, I, somewhere, I, I, somewhere I enough like, so that it's like yeah, this, I, this would be something that contributes to like the value, uh, the overall value. I, I would disagree. I would say it's probably less than like 2% of like things being scalped are, are used. It's going to be a, a uh, very, okay. very I small could, result. I could go with 2% if you want. Sure. Okay. Okay. So a 2% reduction in value would be, I'd pretty sure you'd agree, a reduction of value, right? Um, would it be a reduction in value if it was used? Um, a 2% reduction in value would be a reduction in value, right? Are you talking about per individual unit or for the entire stock of units being resold? For the entire stock of units, right? We're not talking about one scalper. You didn't uh -huh. say scalper adds value. You okay. said scalpers add value, right? So we're talking about the, the, sure, the, the entire, broad category. So if 2% of, of these are being sold as used, is the entire stock being losing value? Well, I guess it depends on how much you consider the ar the arbitrage value um, that we talked about prior. But for some reason, you said you didn't want to include that as a value. The arbitrage value. Yeah. So the idea that you're making something available to somebody that otherwise wouldn't have the access to it. It's a form oh yeah, of value. No, this isn't. Yeah. Well, this wouldn't actually be changed, though, right? So uh, arbitrage. This wouldn't be changed, like made more well, available no, it, to people it, it, who wouldn't otherwise be ac have access to it, because the scalpers do reduce value through the use of things like botting that can like buy out the, the stock. You're you're assuming that the botting is making up a significant percentage of the sales. Do you know that to be the case? You don't. I'm not so, assuming it to be to be a significant portion of the uh, the the sales. I'm assuming it to be a significant portion of the uh, the 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 uh, the buys that scalpers have to use to to make their sales. Sure. But if, it, if yeah. that's an overall insignificant percentage of the total console sold, then that means that your ability to buy a console is literally relying on, if you're somebody that can't wait on day zero to, to spam refresh the page, it means you're literally hoping that a scalper was able to buy it and then you could purchase it from them. In which case, there's some value created there for you. For the, the okay, so you, maybe you, you wouldn't, maybe in the case of like, in the case of like console scalpers, you uh, you probably wouldn't agree. But in the case of like ticket scalpers broadly, or like scalpers mm -hmm. as a whole, mm -hmm. probably agree in the case of ticket scalping, there we have like actual like huge amounts of data here that shows exactly how much uh, ticket scalping affects these industries, and it harms both the producers and the consumers here. How does it harm the producers? Oh, that's actually an interesting question. So the way it harms the producers is uh, when you uh, when you um, when you price uh, when you price an item in a certain way, okay. you you reduce the ability for the producer to uh, price it nearly as perfectly, right? So a producer isn't going to be able to ca uh, keep up with the rate at which scalpers can price those items Wait, way more perfectly than like the than the the uh, the uh, the uh, than the the, uh, the scalper would. Wait, why why so, why, why not? Uh, because the sc the scalper has like a lot more accessibility to like to, um, to uh, secondary to uh, creating a secondary market here, which is why a lot of actually um, what some people have done who like uh, would be like the producers here, what they've done is creating their own secondary markets, right? So sure. they created their, wait, their wait, own secondary markets. Wait, 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 wait. I just want to understand yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. So you're telling me that somehow a scalper who has to put in their own labor and and time and to figure out how to sell a ticket that these people are able to more appropriately price something that they have to buy from somebody else that could just list it higher? Can you walk me through that? Uh, because they can. Because because they can uh, barter with the people on the spot, right? So this is not something that like uh, um, that uh, a major institution would usually be able to do. Hence, why they have to create their own like secondary markets through which they can do that. That would only be true if these prices were like nearly equal, but they're clearly not. There clearly exists a massive price discrepancy here that companies could be taking advantage of. A scalper is not making the majority uh, why of would money. That, why wouldn't that? Excuse me. Why why would that uh, not be the case for uh, if the price difference was uh, was large? Because if the price difference is large, it, it, you, because so right now you just presented this argument as though the primary reason why a scalper is able to make more money is because of how fine tuned these secondary markets are. But that's not the case. The actual case is that there is a massive difference between what somebody is mm -hmm. willing to pay for a particular good or service versus what it's listed at. That's where the majority of the money is coming from. Far more money is coming from that than the ability of a scalper to haggle with an individual. Uh, I, I would disagree. You're just um, wrong. So then. Scalper, yeah, I don't. I don't. We, we have to. Okay, we have well, to I, reconcile okay, this point. If then. you think yeah. I'm just wrong, do you mm -hmm. think like if I give you like sources from like actual economists who know more about the stuff than either of us, they're saying that like scalpers can like harm the producers? Would would you can just concede them? Um, no, there might be other ways that scalpers harm producers in, in ways that I don't know, and even in some ways that I could probably. Oh, what think if of. I said it? What but, if I said but, that I'm just saying that economists I'm quoting here is saying that it was the exact way that I just quoted you, right? Um, yeah, go ahead and show me the article if you want. Okay, sure. But the but like it's not. 
well, I'd have to read it because I don't know exactly if you're quoting it correctly. I'm just saying that like when it comes to scalping, the majority of the money is not made because of an individual's ability to haggle. It's made because of the massive discrepancy between what somebody's willing to pay and what somebody's listed at. P PS5s aren't being sold for $900 because people are haggling them up from 400 or whatever the list price is to $900. They're being sold no, I never for that said that much. That was the only, I never said that was the only reason that there was a discrepancy in price. No, but I don't you, know why you're trying to posture as though I, 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 I have. Okay, hold on. Calm down, okay? We're in huge debate bro mode right now. Okay? I don't think you're, I'm. I don't think that I'm uncalm at all. I don't. I'm you're, in, you're in massive debate bro mode right now, okay? So calm down. Okay. So the problem I, that I'm having is that, you, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Because I maybe uh -huh. I'm misinterpreting. But the way that you phrased it is, you made it sound as though one large reason why a scalper is able to make so much money is because they can individually haggle people in these secondary markets in ways that large corporations or large firms can't. That's what it sounded like to me. And I'm pushing back against that because I think that the majority of the money they make, and when I say majority, I mean like 85, 90% of the money they make is actually because of the massive difference between what people are willing to pay for this given good versus what is being listed at. That's what I'm pushing back on. Now, if you want to go back and say like, uh -huh. or not go back, but if you want to say like, oh yeah, I don't think the majority of the money they make is from haggling. I just think that's a small part of it. Then I would agree with that. But the way that you said it earlier, you made it sound like that was like a primary reason why scalpers were able to make so much no, money. No, I was I think I was listing off I think I was listing off several and you like you stopped me, right? Because you didn't want me to get scalpers. Well, sure, yeah, because I don't want you to list like seven or eight no. different points that well, I disagree with and then yeah. Sure. So I didn't make it seem like this was the only reason then. You interrupted me after I gave one reason. Oh, right? okay, yeah. So that so this one reason, if okay. there's extra money to be made by haggling, it's an insignificant amount of the money being made by a scalper, is what I would say. So Every single individual one will be an insignificant amount. Like any individual piece of evidence is insignificant until you have a lot of them at once, and then you can like use them to, to make good. Okay, arguments, well then right? let, maybe we'll have more then. So let, let's me your next one. Yeah, so the uh, one of the ones that you've mentioned, right, is the discrepancy between the price that some people are willing to pay and the price that is actually listed at, right? Mm -hmm. So this doesn't change the value of the object. The the value of the item itself is still the same regardless of like if somebody uh if somebody is paying this or that because they they they're willing to pay this much for it. But the ways in which that uh, the value is like decreased by scalpers, which are probably far more important for this discussion as well, uh, I'd probably say there there are like aspects like uh. Uh, the scalper is gonna gonna like um, the scalper is gonna get it to you later, and obviously like that's gonna be be a decrease but the, in value. That, that's, well, so like, yeah, so off. real quick, so that's just not true, right? If a the scalper, scalper won't get it to you later, if the scalper was going to get it to you later, why would you be willing to pay a premium for getting it before the next batch of consoles is released? That doesn't make any they, sense. They would You're get literally... it to you later than the, they would get it to you later than the producer would if you had bought it when in place of the scalper. Yes, but so. this is the whole reason why scalping exists because not everybody's able to purchase it when the producer is initially making the good available. That's the whole reason why a scalper is getting paid such a premium, right? Really? Why do you think that's the case? Because there's because most often when it comes to hardware being produced like this, they usually just can't produce enough in the beginning to satisfy the demand. Okay, so you, you think that they can't produce enough, but you think the scalpers don't, they're not like they make more, right? Like this, these would be here regardless of the... Um, no, the, the scalpers aren't making more. Scalpers are essentially reserving you a spot in line. That's basically what you're paying for. You're paying a okay. scalper to reserve a spot in line to get like a first edition of something that you otherwise wouldn't have the time to do. Okay, and you think this is the way in which they, they provide value to the customer? Um, to the person purchasing the... Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you had the option, right, to choose between like... Uh, between like um, the buying something from a scalper mm -hmm. and buying something directly from the producer uh in place of the scalper mm -hmm. you didn't have that that you, you didn't have to stand in line you could get it in place of the scalper mm -hmm. would you choose the scalper where you have like much less trust for this individual because of like obviously the, the huge amounts of aspects of like this is somebody who you don't know you can't really it's going to be a lot harder to sue a person behind ebay than a scalper would you rather go to the scalper or would you rather go to the original producer um assuming i could get it immediately always the original producer of course Sure. So what a scalper does is a scalper takes this product from the original producer, right? Where somebody else could have bought it. Mm -hmm. And then but they not move you, it. But go ahead. Yeah, maybe not me. I agree. Okay. Okay. So they take, 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 uh, take this product from the original producer uh, where it would have been bought by, by someone, right? Mm -hmm. And they make it available to us to a more uh, exclusive group of people, right? Um... I don't know if it's but more exclusive or not. It really depends on how much is available in the initial it supply. It necessarily but, would because it's a higher price, so it's a more exclusive group, right? That's that's not necessarily true. For instance, if ten consoles okay. are available initially, uh -huh. and you're only making it available to um, like the people that could initially buy it, I, I, like there's, there could be a much larger group of people that are willing to pay more than the amount of people that could be in line initially to buy something, right? Like that's not necessarily the case. Okay, but if, if the so what you're saying is like the 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 reason that you think that the scalper isn't making it available to a more exclusive group is because of the fact that uh because of the fact that you couldn't stand in line for it, and thus they're like there are more people who can like pay it's, more yeah, for it. It's possible that there are line. more people that would be willing to pay an extra hundred dollars for it than there are people that were capable or willing or able to spam F5 on a page that was initially. Okay. Like, the do, do, do scalpers make available more, uh, more products to these people? More products to which people? To the group of people who I'm calling like an exclusive group, right? Do they make available more products? Yes. They make available more products, you're saying? 
It would Assu have been assuming, that gr assuming that group of people wasn't able or willing or capable of spam F5 refreshing. Yeah, because uh, otherwise okay. those people have zero so, products available to them. Yes. So it's usually not spam F5 re uh, refreshing either. It's like bots, right? It's not like a human doing anything. Well, I'm talking about the people, the humans that are important. able to buy these on launch day are people that are like spamming the page to refresh and add shit to their carts or whatever, unless it's changed in the past five years. Uh, well, yeah, because usually they're fighting with bots. Sure, but they're also fighting against each other, and it's people that are spam refreshing the page. I, I don't know if this point matters. Or not. There, there are bots that scrape okay, things yeah, and buy sure. things up. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, so in the in the case of like in the case of like a, a, a scalper who's like uh, removing this item from like the the like instead of it being like maybe ten people who could buy the item now it's like there were nine people who could buy it in line and there was like one person who's like buying this item to like to sell it somewhere else right this person technically wouldn't be a scalper but it's like easier to think about like in small numbers here right well if he's buying and reselling so, he is a scalper but go ahead no a scalper has to be somebody who buys it in like large numbers usually uh, for like large profits that's. I'm almost 100% you totally just made that definition up, but if we can run with that if you want. I'm pretty sure you can scalp items individually, but go ahead. Find scalper, a person who resells shares or tickets at a large or quick profit. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it has to be multiple, but I, I, this isn't that important. Okay. I just want to make sure that it doesn't come back later to bite me in the ass that I agreed on some definition that I don't. Like, I'm pretty sure like yeah, somebody sure. can buy one console and resell okay. it, like scalping, it doesn't have to be, but it's not that important. But okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess back on topic then, uh, the, you know, the, the with, with the scalper, let's, for the sake of argument with this one person in our head, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this one person's taking this one product and mm -hmm. making it available to like one person, right? Okay. But now instead of it being like the one person who could like buy it for like uh, uh, the one person who could buy it for like $100, now it's the one person who could buy it for $1,000, right? Sure. Okay. So it's a total number of like one, one person. Um... So it's probably still like an exclusive group, you'd probably say? Uh, if you want to say that it's available to the same number of people, because I think it's probably a wild tangent from the actual discussion. Sure, We're talking about value, uh, right? like if if your if your only form of discrimination of who can purchase it is price, then in that case, the scalper is making mm -hmm. it available to less people. The this isn't, I'm sorry, the only reason I don't want to give on anything here is because I don't want like to say like, oh, I agree with this. And then I come back later and it's like, okay, well, actually I disagree with that. So your initial claim was that they are taking a product and they're making it available to a less exclusive form, uh, a less exclusive group of people necessarily. And my only disagreement was, and I, and it might be the case that you are right. I just don't like the word necessarily because it's possible that there are more okay. people willing to pay $500 or $600 for a PS5 than there are people yeah. that were willing to wait on launch day and refresh the page. In which case, even though the same absolute number of products are being sold, whether through a scalpel or through a distributor, it's possible that they're making it available to a larger cohort of people that are that are willing to spend more for it. Then, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same product sold. I don't know if this is an important point. Um, I just I disagree with the wording of that, like necessarily there, because we're building. All right, if, you don't, so. if necessarily is like a word that, that makes you uncomfortable or something, we can just like not use it. We just say that the, the scalper does this, right? Probably, the scalper generally, sure. Yep. More exclusive group of people. Go for it. So okay. our total availability is being decreased here, right? Um, total availability is being decreased. Mm -hmm. When we say availability, what do you mean by that? Oh, I mean, like, the ability to buy the products. Well, assuming that they sell every console that they buy, how is total... Can you explain how total availability is being decreased? Okay, because it's... Uh, for this certain time period, there's, the thing is no longer available, right? So, for this certain time period, the availability has gone from, like, uh, from uh, a larger group of people could purchase this to a smaller group can purchase this uh, until the next batch is produced. Um, I... I... I, I can hesitantly agree with that. Con I mean, like, if a thousand products are made and then a thousand mm -hmm. are sold, but 500 go through retailers first, I don't know if I would say that the availability was decreased, unless you mean like availability to certain people that don't match that price discrimination or whatever. Like, it seems kind of. Uh, wh where are you going with this? What's the next point, I guess? Yeah, so at, at this point, I think we've gone off on like a pretty large tangent. Sure. Uh, I think what I was originally getting at was like the idea that like scalpers decrease value in many ways, uh, making the product like. Uh, broadly come to you a bit slower than it would if you had bought it from the original producer. It'd be one way. Obviously, like the, sure. there's like... Uh, yeah, that's, but the reason, why, like, the reason why I disagree you, with this is because uh -huh. you're assuming that the people that are... Um, that you're assuming that the people that buy from the scalper would have been able to get it the original way, which I, I don't think that assumption well, is... Well, I'm not. So I'm, I'm not talking about the in, the the single individual who's buying it. I, I think like for them personally, it might it might they might perceive it as adding value, right? Yes. Uh, and well, you'd think so because they're willing to pay a huge premium for it. So yeah. Well, they'd be willing to pay a huge premium to get it from the producer as well. Uh, if the producer priced it at the, at, the, at the same price as the scalper, it would uh -huh. have like the, uh, the one a, a million percent price. agreed. I agree with you so yeah. much, which is why I argue that they which, should be priced more uh, aggressively on launch because it seems like people are willing to pay a lot more for it, and then the arbitrage wouldn't exist. But go ahead. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So in, in this case, the issue, though, is that it, this is like really difficult for producers to do. Uh, it's really difficult for them to produce uh, for them to predict in advance uh, the, the kind of like price they want to set. 
Uh, I think it's more. Either, this is, gets a little bit tangent, out. but I don't know if it's if it's difficult for them to pr- produce like uh, at a given price. I think it's probably more a PR thing that they don't want to launch consoles selling them for nine hundred dollars each because people would lose their fucking minds. Uh, more than like they can't produce it at a given price or whatever, or, or that they can't just set a certain price. But can you say that again? I, I think my audio is going. I, I think that the only reason why they're sold the way they are at launch is for PR reasons, like marketing reasons. I think it probably reflects poorly on a company to sell something on launch for three times the price that they're going to sell it later. People would probably feel like pretty burned by that, and the bad PR from the company isn't worth the whatever little bit more money they'd make selling it at launch day. Would be my guess. So what you're saying is they're like they're trying to create like a, a consumer surplus for the sake of like PR, right? Right. Um, or or th- or rather that like the pricing is reflective of PR more than like actual like whatever type of like like neoclassical model would be used to build how they should price a, a good or service right like for instance like the fact that video games sell for sixty dollars each and have for like the past 20 years probably doesn't correlate very strongly with like market factors that are like raw like inputs and outputs of uh you know labor and, and capital labor, and probably has more to do with like well from a marketing point of view we can justify this blah 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 that, that would be my guess well, when it comes to setting prices, it's usually not based on the value of the item, right? It's usually based on like um, it's usually based on like how much you can maximize your profits with, which can kind of like it. It's influenced by by value, but it's not like value alone. Well, sure, that's why I'm saying like in terms of like maximizing, I, I think we probably agree on that. It, it's not just going to be like a cold like these are all of our like costs for like inputs, and then this is like the good or service we're producing, and then we're going to price it that way. There's probably more like uh, like behavioral econ related shit that goes into pricing stuff rather than like raw like this is like the ins and outs of it would be my guess. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I guess to to get back on topic, uh, it seems like you're, the the kind of interpretation of value you have as like a definition is going to be one that like disagrees with like some economists here and there. Uh, but it's, it seems like you're kind of specifically talking about what seems to be like a. Uh, uh, I guess you're a, a, a little bit of like a modified version of like STV. I wouldn't call it like the STV itself, right? Sure. My understanding is that like depending on what school of th- or not even school, depending on like contextually what area of economics you're talking about, I'm guessing there's like a ton of different mm-hmm. types of value that are talked about. That it can probably be a vague term. It could probably it be absolutely is, yeah. That's sure. That's entirely true. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the the different like even with like when you're just talking about like economic value, there's like a, a bunch of different like theories of value you might use depending on the lens you want to like apply to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, w- I wouldn't really say that like the, the concept of value that you're applying here makes a lot of sense. Uh, so in the, let's like let's t- think uh, take for example the case like the uh, the idea that scalpers add value by making it available to like the group who wouldn't have otherwise been able to. Sure. So usually uh, in in economics when we talk about like value added, we're talking about like usually like uh, either like somewhere along the, like, the stages of production, right? Uh, like like in the term like value added tax. Um, so it, where like every stage of the product is like imbued with like a difference in yep. value. I'm familiar with like VT and how that is priced, sure. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is like, so it, it seems like you want like a kind of like a, a more charitable reading of like your idea of value, which is like understandable. I sure, would agree so with that. I would disagree that it's a more charitable reading. You must understand that the type of value that you're talking about is going to yep. be one type of value, but that like there is definitely room for all sorts of other types of of value that isn't literally just would, imbuing a product with more agree. capital or natural resource or something, right? I, I would com- I would completely agree. Uh, but if you want that kind of like that kind of like um, uh, reasonable kind of interpretation of what you mean based on the context of what you're saying, I think you should afford that to others as well. And you didn't afford that to the person who you were like adding, right? Sure, we could argue that. Do, do you agree that generally? I know that. So value and price are two different things, but generally sure. speaking, as value increases, price is increasing as well. Probably there's going to be some uh, like tracking there, or no. I, I would I would agree that there's probably like some correlation between mm-hmm. the two. I said that yeah. earlier, right? Yeah, it's it's not going to be one to one, of course, but like there's going to be some tracking there, and then there, it won't be one to one for a variety sure. of reasons. If we have a given good or service that retails for four hundred or five hundred dollars, but there's some group of people that somebody's willing to pay three times the price for, that, so the yeah. price is increasing that much, it would seem to be the case that there must there there ought to be some sort of added value there. Like why why would people pay it's so a, much more? So the issue is the issue is there's not added value just because the price is higher. These people have a they, there's a value they have to it. The value is like when when we talk about like um, I, I think the closest you're getting to is like STV. When we talk about like the STV, the idea is like not that the value is the price you are paying for it. The value is the price that you'd be willing to pay for it at a maximum, right? Sure, but like w- w- there must be some form of um there there like. When we talk about these consoles, these aren't going to be yeah. uh, a limited supply of consoles, right? These are going to be um, th- these are going to be produced in the future. I, Everybody I, that wants a PS5 is going to get I don't one. Know what you mean by limited? What? Really, really hard. It really, really depends on what you mean by limited. I'd probably say they are limited in some sense. When I say limited, what I mean is there will there it, it, going forward there will absolutely be enough supply to meet a, an arbitrary level of demand. 
And, and as far as I know, there's never been in the history of major consoles, like a console made that like you just couldn't buy because it didn't exist anymore, except for like very, very rare one-off things. Like, but for like the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, um, Xbox, like they, it will be available. You, you're, you're not going to well, be... I, I would disagree highly, actually. So a lot of older consoles, like the reason it's still available, right, is because uh, the producer who's not going to be manufacturing it anymore, uh, now the uh, the console can be like uh, produced by other people. It can be like replicated and emulated. When no, no, I, I, uh, so I'm, I don't mean like in terms of like buying a Sega. I just mean like for every major console release, generally yeah. once like the months roll on and the the fabrication plants and everything are up, like generally you're if you want to buy a console, you can buy one from a major retailer. You're, you're not going to be like hard locked out of it. I'm not talking about buying you a Sega. Probably agree that to like just well, the, you you at some point do become hard locked hard locked out of it, right? After like some number of years, possibly sure. Well, just whenever they stop producing them. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. But yeah. For, for all intents and purposes, people that are buying $1,000 PS5s now, they would be able to buy another one in, in a few months, right? So it's, so it's as limited as just about any good that's limited. Wait, what? say that again? So it's limited in the same sense that like you'd call any good limited. If you'd ever applied limited to a good, this would be one of them, right? Well, I, I, well not to any good. I think that, I, I mean, different. There, there's, there's different like timelines for different goods. Like... Um, Maybe you misinterpreted me. So yeah, I, I, I'm not saying that we call any good limited. I'm saying that uh, if you would call any good limited, like not if you would call all of them limited, but if you would call any specific good limited, uh -huh. this would be one of the ones that are limited. Like no sensible definition of limited would that would have like would apply to any good. Uh, and wouldn't yeah, I guess it. like I feel like we're getting lots of semantics. What, what I'm I saying, is, sure. I mean, you. you yeah, I just want to be make sure that we're being really clear here. I'm, I'm sure, trying, yeah, I'm being really clear. Really what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to say is that anybody that wants a PS5 right now, in three months, will be able to buy one. They don't have to buy yeah, a scalper yeah. right now. That's essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah anybody, uh, anybody who wants a PS5 right now will be able to buy one. So, but if people are willing to pay a massive premium for somebody sure. to like hold a place in line for them or something, and, mm -hmm. and, and want, it, it feels like, is that not like a type of value? Or, or, or more, more specifically, let's say I have an example. Let's say that I pay a friend $200 to, to sit outside of a store um, to like buy something, like an iPhone 15 on release day. If I pay a friend, sure. I'll give you $200 if you stay outside that store and you get this product from me on day one and then you deliver it to me. Um, right here. Yeah, so uh, is, 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 is that friend not providing like a value there? Or? So uh, I, I would probably say that like your friend who's staying in line to some degree is probably like doing something to like help you out, right? Yeah. But I wouldn't say that like I wouldn't say that like, somebody who has like a quasi monopolistic sort of like control over like the, the your ability to get a product within a certain time frame is the same as like providing you with value because your friend isn't your friend isn't going from like a uh, your your friend I don't think is like subtracting from like the uh, the availability avail uh, availability you would have had to buy a product. Well, but right? they are subtracting from the availability because well, one you don't have the ability to buy it on launch day, yep. which I assume is the same of a lot of people that are buying from scalpers, um, and, and then two. I think I think I, I think I understand the issue here. Like the, the issue here is like uh, in terms of in terms of this analogy, I think it kind of highlights it. You're thinking about things in the framework of like, does the scalper provide me with extra value? That's much different though than the scalper adding value, right? Um, like if, I guess if, if I, we take if that if reading wrong, of it, I'd sure. But like in that case, I literally no retailer value. or reseller anywhere ever adds value ever. But I mean, like, they are right. Like, no, I just I completely disagree. Uh, so well, like when I when I buy any good or, when I buy any product yeah. whatsoever from like a Walmart or a Target or an IKEA, sure. I could theoretically order these online through like manufacturers in some places. Are they? But they're gonna mark their thing up for me to have like the convenience of going to the store, getting everything in one place. Like, are they adding value or no? No, I would, I would probably agree that they would be adding value uh, at least for you personally, right? But what we're talking about here is not like you individually getting uh, get, like uh, receiving more values. Talking, we're talking about like adding value. Your scalpers. Oh, like whole, adding uh, value to like just the existence of the console or something or. Sure. Well, in that case, yeah, I guess they don't add any value to that because they're not changing that at all. All right. Yeah. Then I, th I think we, I think we agree here. But it's got it's uh, this kind of a. Um, uh, I think there are some other things we can go over here really fast. Um, so y you said the. Um, uh, do you do you think that the, the 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 scalper would like decrease the price to match their seller or anything? Would the scalper decrease their price to match the yeah, at, seller? After, the at like somewhere down the line, right when the uh, when the the seller is starting to produce more, do you think the scalper is going to like decrease it? Jesus, I'm sorry. I just read just my mind's back. Okay, will, will the scalper decrease their price down the line, like as more supply becomes available? Yeah, yeah, of course they mu they necessarily yeah. Okay, so the the scalper then like, do you think that the uh, the scalper's act of uh, of uh, in this case the scalper's act of like waiting in line has been neutralized for these consoles? Um, well, in that case, I mean the scalper would be would be losing or what? Wait, what exactly are you asking? 
I'm asking you, like, uh, like I just said, uh, do you think that the, do you think that in this case, the scalper's action of waiting in line for it has been neutralized? Do you think it's no longer adding value here? Um, well, I mean, it would seem to be the case that in the value that I'm talking about, the only way that any added value can be realized is if somebody purchases a console from a scalper. So if a scalper buys a ton, sits on them, never prices them appropriately, never sells them, then mm -hmm. then the, whatever type of value I'm well, talking would, about wouldn't, wouldn't be a exist. Scalper. What? That wouldn't be a scalper. Well, I'm sorry. If, if they sit on them because they're unable to price them correctly so people don't buy them, then sure. that then there would be obviously no value added there, yeah, to anybody because nobody's buying them. Literally, this is like a lose-lose-lose situation, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, I guess there's there's probably nowhere we can go with uh, with like adding more to the detail of this conversation, which seems sure. to be like, um, I, I, we the, come to an agreement, I guess? I think uh, so. I, the only thing that bothers me when people yeah. talk about this conversation is that like there are, in, in, in most economic exchanges, it is very rare mm -hmm. to find any economic yeah. exchange that literally is just everybody fucking loses. It's very rare. Usually there are winners and losers on both sides of any particular like economic exchange. When you talk about like yeah. scalping- I would, I would say in the case, case of scalpers, there definitely is an obvious winner here. It's yeah. just a scalper, right? Well, there's, two there's, two there's, there's, there's two winners. There's two winners and one- there's two obvious winners and one obvious loser, um, wh whichever one. Um, the obvious winner is going to be the uh, scalper, and then whoever mm -hmm. purchases the product from the scalper, that's like assuming you're not being like forced under threat of like death to like make that purchase, um, that, they, that person is winning as well. And then the loser is going to be whichever person would have randomly gotten to purchase the, um, the uh, good given the scalper not being able to do so, right? I wouldn't really say that a lot of people who, who uh, buy from scalpers feel like they're winning. Uh, Why, but I have no not? idea what the opinion polls on this. I don't think either of us do. Well, I, I would assume any time, I, I might actually just even just define this. Any time you uh, willingly e engage in any kind of economic transaction, assuming you're not like buying insulin and you're about yeah, to die, that's I would- have, That's a huge weasel word there is willingly, right? What does that really mean? When I say uh, willingly, what I mean is- you ever do is gonna be under the influence well, of like social pressures. This and, like, is why I just qualified yeah. it with as long as it's not like an essential inelastic good or service that you need to have, otherwise you'll like suffer massive material or mental or some kind of horrible harm. And I don't sure, think whatever- It doesn't whatever, really tell you what willing means, right? It's still vague. Willing as in you are opening your wallet and you're buying something. You're engaging in an economic transaction. Oh, just it's literally just opening your wallet and buying something. There's nothing yes. else you want to. You so, for instance, there. when we talk about like, uh, like when we talk Before about you like, go on. I, I want to make sure this this is actually the definition of willing you're using. Yes. Okay, so if you open your if if I like point a gun at you and you open your wallet and buy something, that's okay. obviously not willing, right? Yes, I believe I just said that. Yes. You can you just said that your definition of willing was this, and I'm telling you that's not your definition. Right? I, I wait, I literally just said as long as you're not under massive threat of like material was, harm within or, the context of you using willing within a within a discussion, this wasn't you giving your definition of willing. So if you want to tell me what do you think will what do you think something being willing really is? So we'll try this one more time. So my definition of willing is when you engage in an economic transaction and you're not doing so because you're under threat of, of like losing like life or limb or like mental well-being or something or some in, like essential inelastic good or something. Okay, so just an uh, willing is like economic transactions where you're uh, you're um, or I guess you'd probably specify like a willing economic transaction is one where you're not under threat of like losing life or limb. Sure, something like that or some other massive like external pressure that's okay. You're using your word again. You're just throwing in massive there. Like, I'm not sure what you, like, where's the threshold of massive? Do you, do you think that there are no different types of economic exchanges? Do you think that all I of them are being forced or what? I think that there's no such thing as a voluntary transaction. Think you think there is no such thing as a, so are all economic transactions the same to you or do they, are these on different it, levels? No, of course not. Okay. So what would you use to describe the, here. sure. So what would you use to describe the difference between when I go to the store and I buy a Kit Kat bar, like a candy bar versus when I pay my rent? What word would you use to describe the difference between those two exchanges? Uh, wait, would you would you say that these aren't both voluntary? What? No, no. I'm asking you. How would you describe mm -hmm. the difference between me going to the store and buying a candy bar versus me paying my rent? What are the What's the uh, difference? I'm not sure exactly what you're. I'm not sure exactly what you're trying to ask here. Probably in the case of like buying a candy bar, you're like trying to uh, you're trying to like, buy some kind of good. And I'm asking case, like, you about what the difference is between these two exchanges uh, in terms of my willingness to engage in them. Is there any difference to you? Well, in terms, of, so you're you're asking me a question that presupposes like your own definition, which I I reject. Right. So you're just begging the question here. I'm not. Like I don't so think I'm, there's I'm, willing, I'm, willingness I'm not, really. Is there. That can, that can apply to economic transactions. Okay, what what year in school are you? <laughs> what, this this should be like an easy question. I don't understand how this okay, is so I difficult. Don't, I don't know why you're being so smug. Like this is. I'm not being smug. You're the one that's yeah. like trying to nail me to the wall on something that I think every single person. I'm not trying to trick you into like into like admitting anything. I'm just trying I, no, to like get you.
Tell me what your definition here I, is. I think I've given like a fair one that 99% of people uh -huh. will be able to parse like pretty accordingly. Like, wait, oh. wait so 99% of people being able to parse the definition isn't the same as it being like a useful in a conversation like this, right? We're I think that's literally the, the definition of, of useful right? is most people can understand something and okay. it's explanatory. We're talking right? about like the nitty gritties of economics here. And I think this is like, this is going to like, there are issues with your definition that are going to like be, be present, like, like exclude, like sure. edge, edge cases, right? Okay. If you think that there is an issue. Be, if in 99% think... of cases, that definition, definition would be fine. There'd be nothing wrong with it. But in these weird edge cases, they start to have issues, right? And this is one of those weird edge cases, okay. Calping. Okay. Whatever weird edge case, edge case you can come up, I don't think that yeah. buying a PS5 is going to be in that weird edge case. If somebody is buying a... What? what? In the weird edge case of what? Well, the, a weird edge case here would have to be somebody tells you they're going to kill your child if you don't buy a PlayStation 5. This is not like... Okay, would, I thought this was like... I thought this wouldn't mean edge case for your definition, right? You, you told you corrected me early on this. That's not being an edge case. Like this would fit within your definition. Well, yeah, I would say that that would not be a voluntary okay. exchange. Okay. All I'm saying is okay, that people you said that wouldn't be a voluntary exchange. Uh, so, like, it, would you say that like if somebody has to like, uh, would you say like work isn't voluntary? Would I say that work is voluntary? Yeah. Um, I think that working at a particular place is uh, is more voluntary than working. Period. Um, I wouldn't say that yeah, working. I period. I'm trying to give you a very, it's like asking if something sure. elastic or inelastic, right? I think that a particular brand of soda is going to be more elastic than soda, period. It's going to be less elastic, right? There's like scales. Oh, so yeah. if you ask me like, is working voluntary? I would say that working, probably not really. Um, working at a particular place can be voluntary, but work period seems to be pretty necessary. Okay. So you probably said like working is like a, not a voluntary transaction. It's a necessary transaction. Yes. Okay, and like buying the like basic essentials you need for like living would be like a necessary transaction. Sure, buying any food is going to be somewhat necessary. Yes, it's not going to be like so, yeah. Uh, so obviously, like if somebody's in like the weird the weird situation of like they have some like ex like um very very hyper specific mental health issue, like some absurd example like this, right? Uh, you probably said this person like for for them possibly like a PlayStation might not be voluntary transaction. It might be like a necessary. There there like a, there so could be some edge like, cases. Yeah, ridiculous. There could be yeah. some ridiculous edge cases where you absolutely need a PS5. Maybe you bet somebody that you could get a PS5 otherwise you'll kill yourself on like launch day and so you absolutely sure, need yeah. to, sure there might be some but 99.99% of people that are buying a PS5, there's just like a discretionary non-essential transaction and I would assume that if they're buying it it's because there is like some value that they see there and that's why they're buying it not because they're being forced to or because it's some mandatory purchase or it's some inelastic good that they need to ensure sure like life liberty and like health and everything yeah so uh if, if I, I guess like um now with like your your kind of like more uh, nailed down definition of like what you mean when you say voluntary it's like a weird kind of arbitrary threshold but i can i, I can like intuitively get it could you tell me like where exactly um how exactly this fits into our earlier conversation i honestly at this point i i i think you were what did we, we it was something into like Oh, we were talking about who's harmed and who's uh, benefited mm -hmm. from the uh, scalping transaction. And my argument sure. was that the scalper themselves benefit because through arbitrage, they make a high profit. And that the purchaser of the scalper, if they're willing to trade their money for, for that good or service, then they're probably benefiting as well because they're engaging willingly in an economic transaction, which most okay. people see as a benefit. Yeah. Okay. So if I, if I, uh, if I were to buy up, like if I were to have some like exclusive deal with PlayStation and I bought up all of the, um, all of the, the PlayStation, right? Every mm -hmm. single one of them. Mm -hmm. And I was the reseller. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think people would be, would feel that they're like winning in that transaction? Like I just, I just buy them up because they go to deal with PlayStation. It's not, not anything like I'm, I'm doing to them. Um, for the case of a PlayStation, I would still argue that it's probably a beneficial transaction. Uh, because it's an inelastic, or I'm sorry, because it's an elastic good. You don't need a PlayStation. It's a luxury good. If, if so somebody wants to buy these and resell them. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it almost seems like you're saying like categorically, right? And I, I, I don't think this really is the case of like a thing you believe, right? You know, you probably don't think categorically like any voluntary or voluntary view as you've described it, transactions are going to be good, right? Um, I think vaguely, I think I kind of have to say that. I think that's how a lot of economists tend to look at those types of transactions, no? Categorically. I believe so, yeah. Or at least, so my, my, my yeah. only familiarity with this is like when you're looking at like trade policy and whatnot, people look at the increased liberalization of trade and then they look at the increase in like trade that happens across borders as being like a net positive. Like the more trade that happens, the better it is because they assume that if people are engaging in economic transactions, it's good for them, um, save for any crazy thing. So I, I'm viewing it the same way. If somebody is going to some place and buying or selling something, generally that's a good thing. Like that economic activity is positive. Yeah, yeah well, generally, generally it's a big difference than categorically. Uh, if they, if, if it's a matter of like not understanding what I mean here, like I can elaborate more on what I mean by categorically. <laughs> okay. Categorically, I guess it depends like, on how you define the category. Clear. Are you going to include things like essential goods and services here or? Okay, so when I say categorically, I mean for the category of all things that are voluntary, it would be good, right? So yeah, but, that, but the question- agree. This I, is absurd, right? Well, no, it depends on how you define, because you snuck in, well, you didn't say again, but you, you said voluntarily, and that was the key word that we had a disagreement over. What does yeah, voluntary I mean? I so 
no, no, we, we agreed on what this, this is like about our, we, we, we agreed that like now that I have like an intuitive understanding, we can talk about this more. And I didn't sneak this in. Like I said this several times. No, I didn't say I backed up. I mean, you snuck it in, but the word, okay. the voluntary word is really important there. You seem like really intent on like painting me as like using tricky debate tactics, which like coming from you is kind of like, Doug, I think it's a little Wait, bit do you really believe I'm using tricky debate tactics here? In this one? No, I, I think you're being completely good faith. The issue is you're calling me and you're saying like, I'm trying to use like tricks to get I'm you. I'm not yourself. saying no, you're not. using tricks. I'm trying to, well, you my problem. Said, you, you said sneaking and then you like moved no, it back. I, li I literally said, I, I said. You told, told me earlier I was using weasel words. Well, earlier you, because when you say something like plenty of value is added or plenty of the price increase comes from this, well, hold on. What do you mean by that? Because if you mean 5% versus 95%, mm -hmm. that's I, that's like material to the conversation. It's really important to, to figure that out. And I, I can't let you just get away with saying like, oh, well, I think that, uh, you know, I think it's important. But when you say something, somebody's using weasel words that has like the underlying implication that they're being kind of like they're being weaselly, right? They're being tricky. Okay. I'm sorry that I, I don't even know I'm if not, I used I'm the word weaselly earlier, but I'm sorry if I said that. Like, okay. It. You did. Not, we can go back and like look at the bot if you want later. Uh, but I don't, I, I'm not like personally offended or anything, but just, I just don't think that it's like necessary for us to like do this like weird, like posturing thing. We just like get to the conversation, right? I totally agree with you. Um, okay. Well so, then you don't, don't need to keep painting me as like, I'm, as though I'm tricking you. Um, if that is not at all my intention, I'm very sorry if that's okay. the impression that you're getting. So yeah. Okay. So, uh, I get, I guess uh, we were on the topic of like voluntary, right? So I'm not stinking it in here. I'm just saying like, do you think categorically that voluntary transactions are good? Yes. Okay, categorically, just to be really super clear yes. here, so I'm not like tricking you later. Right? Any voluntary transaction, I would say, is good. Okay, and your definition of voluntary is ones where like it's a thing you're getting that's a, that's essential, or the things that you're getting that's not essential. Um, and you're not being like forced to through like some kind of like other like uh, levy. Yeah, that something. you're like willingly in the for and if, for yeah. our be um, uh, fuck. What do you call it? Um, for, for all terms of morality, if you're engaging in something in the free will and the compatibilist way of free will where nobody is forcing you externally, you're making a choice and it's a choice that represents your true choice and you're not a throw, blah, 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 that type of voluntary transaction, I would say that all of those are good, yes. All, every single action in that category. Voluntary Mr. transactions are good, yes. Okay, yeah, so okay. You, you don't think there are any cases where like there can be a voluntary transaction which is like a net harm to the world? Um, that can be a net harm to the world. Oh, I'm sure there are plenty of those. Oh, we might be operating under different like normative theories here. Um, so are I just for, like for full disclosure, I'm like a strong utilitarian. I, I'm not sure about you. What is what would you call your like normative theory here? Um, Maybe like uh, yes, I'm I'm a, yes, I'm a utilitarian. I'm a consequentialist. Yes. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let's back up one more. Okay. Sure. When you say so for the world is what we're talking about. When we're talking about morals. You seem to like take issue with that. I don't have any issue with any of that. Okay. Okay. So, so wait, 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 wait. Can I just ask you real quick? Because yeah, I know I, I think I see where this fight is going. Okay. So when you said are voluntary transactions good categorically, mm -hmm. I agree yeah. that voluntary transactions are good categorically. But now I'm wondering if we're about to wrestle over what that word "good" means. Because if you mean "good" insofar as you serves, don't have to. We're both utilitarians. So there's we could probably just really because agree we're on both that. utilitarians though doesn't mean that we can't have different contextual understandings of what "good" is or what "good" means here. We could have different understandings of like what well-being means, right? Okay, what I'm saying is that like if I agree that like categorically uh -huh. that like voluntary transactions are good, that doesn't mean that I necessarily agree that every single transaction has like the good of the world like taken into account. So for instance, like categorically, I would consider it to be good for voluntary transactions like buying an airplane ticket and flying somewhere. Like that's good that you have like that voluntary okay. exchange. So However, airplane I, travel might be so bad like, for the world. If yeah. I said moral, would you say every voluntary transaction is categorically moral? You'd probably reject that. Yes, I would there. reject that, of course. Okay, yes. so good was a little bit too confusing for you. Uh, we sure, or well, when that. you say good, I'm thinking I'm, of good in the me, context of we, economics, yeah. Yeah, if, if we're talking about like, okay, when you in the context of economics, good? Yes, good as in like it's, it benefits both people making the transaction. Yes, good. That, it, that, it, it serves okay. at that economic if sense. If yeah. like good in the context of economics, I would think they're talking about like a good. I've never heard the term good used to say like it benefits both people. Well, that's because uh, we don't typically talk about good and evil in terms of economics, right? Yeah, economics I know. We is... talk about them in terms of philosophy, and that's what we're talking about now, right? Well, so I didn't we, think we were talking about philosophy. Uh, I thought we were just talking about economics. So if you want to make wait, it good about philosophy, then it's a different... When, you, when, I, when I said good, did you think that what I was talking about like was a good or service? I don't think so, right? I, I thought you meant when you said good or evil. No, like no, you just I, th said. I thought when you said so what, you, what you understand, I mean, and you don't have to like try, try to like uh, be be weird about it. What you understand, I mean, is when, when I say good, I mean moral, right? That's I think I think that's clear. I understand what you say when you when you say that now. But for instance, if you were to say to me, mm -hmm. do you think that it's good when prices set uh, or when company when firms set a price that's near like the equilibrium point of the market? Do you think that's a good thing? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's good. I don't mean that to be morally good. I just mean that's normatively good and that it satisfies whatever normative condition. theory would be 
I'm, I'm are using normative in like a non philosophical context. Um, like I'm using good no, would be probably morally good. Well, so I don't believe that. So all moral claims are normative claims, but I don't believe all normative claims are moral claims. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? If we want to talk philosophy. I don't really agree with that. Okay, so there can be normative claims made in the realm of sure. economics. Well, I'm making a normative good claim there. However, that normative good claim is not a moral claim. Even though all moral claims must be normative, I can make normative claims that are not moral claims, right? So when I say that like it would be good to set a price at an equilibrium point for, for a firm to do that, that can be good normatively. It doesn't mean it has to be good morally. Is that Okay. Uh, so when you're talking about the term good, it, it's like when well, the term norm, normative means like to conform to like some kind of like um, some kind of like set of guidelines, right? Yes, like so an economics to, like, a moral like, guideline, right? No, no, it would be uh, like economics guidelines. What we're talking about, because I thought that's what we were talking yeah. about. Economics. Well, I'm not yeah. sure what economic guideline defines good. Uh, could you pull that up for me? Could you like give me a source that I can like look at later? <clears throat> well, I, I think economic guidelines I think that, mo I think like that you said, I think economic that, don't delve into the topics of good and evil. Okay, I think that when most people talk about <clears throat> sure. economics, there are some things that we agree are probably quote unquote good things, right? So like it's probably better for like an equilibrium price to exist than for the supply or demand to be too low or too high for a given price, right? That that's like a, a good thing, right? For price given, to match equilibrium price. Yes, right? yes. Okay. That's probably okay. A, a good thing. Now that doesn't I necessarily mean it's morally think, good. And I don't know if <laughs> economists have like a whole set of like- I don't think you'll find anywhere like within economics literature, like a, a non-moral type of good other than like good or service. So I'm not sure what you're on about. Okay, if it wasn't clear for you, like we can, let's, I guess to, to reiterate, when I say good, I'm talking about morally good. Like, in, okay. in, in, yeah. Sure. So I'm not talking about like a good or service. I'm talking about morally good. Do you think it's morally good? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that all categorically, all voluntary tra transactions are morally good? Absolutely not. Of course not. I agree. So in the case of scalping, do you think that there's a possibility at least that they might not be morally good? Um, of course it's possible. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So going into this in more detail, right? So it seems like, uh, without scalpers, it doesn't seem like there'd be any like major downsides that wouldn't be outweighed by the upsides. Well, Just there would be major downsides. Process. You say again? So if we identify that there are two groups of people that benefit from scalping, both the people that purchase from we scalpers. Have what? We haven't. Okay, well, w maybe we should talk about that then, because obviously the next part of your argument is contingent on scalpers providing no value to anybody, right? Or, or not benefiting anybody? No. It's not about a matter of like no value to anybody. Like obviously you probably perceive yourself as like gaining some kind of value, but like a net, there's a net drain in what I call like, uh, what I call like uh, even, even like in a philosophical sense value and also like in an economic sense. Okay. Like do you think, do you think that like, people that are buying from scalpers, do you think that they're benefiting or not? Uh, the people buying from scalpers, I don't think, I, it, it depends on the person buying it, right? So uh, I think broadly, probably like on, on, on average, probably they would be benefiting. Yeah. So they're benefiting. Do you agree that scalpers that sell things right. for a profit are benefiting? Scalpers who sell things for a profit are probably benefiting, yeah. Okay, Maybe. so then if we agree that those two people are benefiting, then, okay, so carry on with, so I, I'm just saying that, like, just getting rid of scalping. If with those two, that those two people are benefiting, what? Mm -hmm. it, so we can agree that there are upsides then to scalping that affects two parties here, okay? And it negatively sure, and affects people that... People in the world. Dude. Yeah, so two people isn't that, money. That isn't that much. Right? Oh, well, if it's only two people affecting the supply, then I guess this entire argument is moot. If there's only one so buyer and one scalper, then we're done with this conversation, I guess. People, but also, if it benefits two people, but it also harms two people, that would be an issue, right? Um, I, well, it, I mean, in that case, it would be a wash. Well, no, we'd, we'd probably like check, take a look like like which one is harmed more and which one is like benefited more, right? And we sort of weigh these things out, like this just backbone of utilitarianism kind well, of Well, sure, I guess, yeah, if you want to get more into it specifically. I don't understand why we brought up that there are 7 mil billion people in the world. I don't understand how that had to do with anything. It's relevant because you mentioned the fact that there are, you mentioned the fact that two people are benefited, okay, right? Okay, I'm so uh, sorry. Hold on. Let me clarify my language. I'm so sorry. When I say ahead. two Go people, ahead. what I meant to say were two parties, mm -hmm. okay? The, okay. The, so the, the, classic, the, sure. the, the class of people that are scalpers or the party of people that are scalpers, the party of people that are buying from scalpers, these are two parties that are benefited by this transaction. Yeah. And then the party and of people that are trying to buy on day one, people, those people right? are harmed. And there are a lot of other people who are not benefited by the interaction, right? There are a lot of people who are harmed by it, right? Well, sure, that people that would be, I, I, I was literally just saying that, right? So the two parties uh -huh. that are benefited are the scalpers and the people buying the scalpers. The parties that is harmed, the, the one party that is harmed are going to be the people that are um, not able to buy it on launch day that would have been able to had a scalper not purchased it in front of them. So yeah, there, there, are, there are people who would have been able, been able to buy it on launch day. And they're also like, uh, like I was going to send you earlier, there are a lot of like economics research saying that it's like, it could be harmful to the, uh, the producer. Um, there's like a huge chance of that being the case due to like the fact that like they can set things more perfectly, right? 
What? Uh, uh, well, clearly they're not setting things perfectly, hence why this massive arbitrage exists. But wait, can you? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Can you set more perfectly? Right. I said that the, the scalpers can set things more perfectly. I'm not referring to the uh, the uh, the producers can set things more perfectly. Oh, Obviously. sure. I think here the producers could, but they choose not to for other reasons. I, well, I'm not sure why you think the producers could. If you'd like to uh, like elaborate more on that. Oh, the producers, well, producers could very easily retail it at a much higher price for their launch day stuff than they would later on. Do you think they could they could probably like change the price like the nearly the same rapid rate that a scalper could? That a no, but they don't have to change it at a rapid rate. They could very easily just increase it to some. Um, so they would be doing it less perfectly than the scalper would because they don't do it at nearly the same rate. We're they might not be able to do it as perfectly as the scalper, but just because you can't do something as perfectly as a scalper doesn't mean you can't do something much better than you are now. And you'd probably reduce the I amount of scalping that would exist. That you couldn't do it better than they could now. I agree that there are ways they could change it. I'm saying that they can. They, they're not going to be able to do it as perfectly as a scalper. That's what I was bringing up, and you disagreed with that. Um, okay. I, well, if you're going to back it up to that position, then I don't know why you bother bringing this up, but what's the next point? Back it up to that position. Like I'm, I'm just saying like it's the producers are harmed, right? To some small degree at least because Wait, they can't. Can you explain to me how the producers are harmed? Okay. I'm telling you now, like they, they can't, they can't nearly, uh, they can't do nearly as well when it comes to setting the prices of things as a scalper can. Do you scalpers think that scalpers are preventing these producers from setting different prices on launch day? I keep telling you to like explain it to you and like interrupting you with midway through the explanation, right? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So if the scalpers are if the scalpers are uh, uh, setting these prices more perfectly, these are potential profits that the uh, the uh, the um, the producer could have like uh, imperfectly sort of balanced towards that they now no longer can because the scalpers are already filling that niche, right? So if you want, here's some economic literature about scalpers. These are the pros and cons. You can read through all of it. I think it's a pretty unbiased article. Uh, it's not like a, it's not like a tricky lefty article or something. Uh, it talks about like the 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 uh, ideas. This is specifically in regards to ticket resales, right? So ticket scalping. Uh, we don't have much data on console scalping for obvious reasons. It's not nearly as huge of a phenomenon as ticket scalping because it's not nearly as easy. Uh, but if you want, there's some, there's some research on it. This is like this paper does show that there are like the de there are downsides associated with like uh, imperfectly being able to set prices associated with ticket scalping, right? That harm the producers. Um, I I don't know what I don't know what this has to do with what we're talking about. Okay. Don't know how you don't know what it has to can, do. With can, well, so so okay. So I thought you were I thought you were going to explain this. Um, hold on, I thought you were going to explain this, but you didn't. So I'll ask the question again. Can okay. You, can well, you tell uh, me why why aren't producers able to set higher prices on launch day? Uh, they are able to set higher prices than they do on launch day. Why don't they? Okay, because they don't because they want to produce some kind of like a, they want to give some kind of a, a consumer surplus, right? So consumers are more likely to come buy their product, uh, and so mm -hmm. that they'll like they'll look better, and the more people want to work for them, there are huge upsides. Okay, to that, so right? if that so if the wait, wait, okay so. Like, if okay, the case ahead. is that they don't set higher prices because they're trying to create consumer surplus, if that is mm -hmm. the case, then how can you say that a harm is suffered when a scalper comes in and takes advantage of their intentional pricing? Because when you say that a scalper is scraping off value that they otherwise could be enjoying, or price, right, that they could be making more money, you just said that clearly they turned down making that additional money because they're trying to create consumer surplus. Well, anytime you create consumer surplus, you're going to create scalping. I don't understand how you can say that that harm is being suffered. They're choosing to well, suffer that harm, whether or not the scalper exists at all. No, that's this big issue with what you said there. So no, not, not there's not it's not necessarily the case that every time that you create a consumer surplus, you'll create scalping. Do you want some examples of times where it doesn't? Sure. Curious. Okay. Places where scalping is illegal would be an example where like scalping is not nearly the same kind of problem it is anywhere else. Can you give me uh, an example of that? Because every single time of scalping that I'm familiar with in the United States is pretty illegal and people do it literally everywhere. But go that's ahead. not true. Uh, there are plenty of things. There were plenty of uh, regulations in the past. I think uh, uh, back in like the 1800s, they had so, regulations. So as somebody that has been to sport. Yeah, more modern ones now. That's Wait, yes. So, so real quick. So as somebody that's been, this is completely anecdotal and I could be wrong. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong here because they all hate scalping as well. But um, my understanding is that in any PAX event and any TwitchCon event I've been to and any sporting event I've been in front of um, and for any hardware release basically ever, there has always been scalpers, even if they've been explicitly against the rules. Uh -huh. So, I, that, like, with, these markets exist, whether or not you want to acknowledge them. Right. Your lived experience of scalpers outweighs the fact that there are, like, obvious, there's obvious cases where scalping was not an issue, right? I don't know if scalping has ever been not an issue. You, you told me that oh. you can, you told me that you can prevent scalping, and then you just gave me an example of laws that exist. I don't think the laws that exist prevent scalping. My you argument. Can, I didn't say laws that exist. All laws that exist prevent scalping. Obviously, that's absurd. I think there's some laws that prevent scalping, right? And there have been some laws that in the past that exist that also prevented scalping. They did a pretty good job at it. Like you can regulate against these things. Like if there's an issue with scalping, you can regulate against that, and you can like move the uh, you can move the incentives incentives back in the hands of like the producer here. How? And I produce. What do you mean how? How can you move the uh, incentive back to the, how do you prevent scalping with a law? Tell me. Oh, by, by illegalizing scalping. You put some regulation for like a maximum amount of price, like, like a max price that you're allowed to set, uh, that you're allowed to like resell an object at or like some kind of good. Uh, you can do it for specific use cases of specific goods. Like for example, like uh, a what, what do you do when people still scalp? You do a service or you can do, go ahead. What? What do you do when people still scalp? You mean when people like break the law? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, you like enforce the law? I don't know why this is complicated. Like when you people break a law, you enforce it, and you like it brings the rate at which people scalp down. Um, the scalping becomes no longer a problem because like the scalping is like the is minimized to the point of like no, almost non-existence. Yeah, I guess I, I just don't ever I haven't seen that happen anywhere. But I, who knows, man? I might just be crazy. Okay. You've never seen you've never seen like scalping laws in place that like reduce the scalping rate to. Like, I've a, heard a, of like no, I haven't heard of that. It's possible that exists, but I'm curious oh. if that happens. Like. Are, are, are there like effective laws against scalping that have actually prevented things from being scalped? Because my understanding is that scalping literally is just, that's just like, it happens everywhere. Like it just is a case. There are, there are things that make the scalping rate negligible. There, I think there, there are probably like, no matter what, there's always going to be somebody who breaks the law, right? No matter what law you set. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't have murder laws, right? So we, we want to like, to, to implement laws in such a way, right? That these laws can then like influence behavior in such a way, right? That they, that they make people uh, less likely to do things that cause harm. So the idea here of like implementing a law against scalping has worked in the past and would work in the future. It's just the issue is like scalping is a for a specific group of people. Scalping is like uh, is is a is a, a thing which they which they uh, they find positive. For another group of people, I, I like the producers, for example, it's a thing they find negative. Um, uh, so. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, okay. So let's continue to the next part. I'm curious how producers are harmed if they are voluntarily setting a price uh, way below the equilibrium point. Uh, the re the ways in which they're harmed are things like um, so like I mentioned earlier like the thing I've mentioned like four times now which you seem to just ignore I guess is the imperfect uh, imperfect ability to set a price. Uh, and, okay, and wait, can we talk about this one? Could then yeah, we were talking about it. Then you move back to this and you ask me the question again. Okay, so let's talk about this. So we when we you were. Okay, sure. Uh, it's okay. You can calm down. You don't have to be. I don't think I'm upset. Down. Okay, you're uh, doing a very good job at masking that not upsetness. But thanks. So but... you said the uh, imperfect ability to set a price. So yeah. when you say that, the implication to me, and I might be reading what you're saying wrong, so I said implication, uh -huh. is that companies could otherwise be setting a price where they'd be gaining more money, but somehow they're not able to do that because of scalpers? Or do you think that if scalpers didn't exist, their prices would be set differently? Uh, yeah. You really believe that if scalpers didn't exist? Because they, the prices would be set differently, yep. Okay, well then maybe that can just be like the, our... Um, we, we'll just never agree on that. Um, well, why don't they set prices differently now? I linked it to you over Discord. You can take a look at that. Um, this so is what kind you of, linked me had to do with ticket prices on concerts, which is a totally yes. different thing than what we're talking about here. Do you think that the, the, the economics of ticket scalping won't apply to the economics of like console scalping? Absolutely not. It's a completely can you tell different. Me why, can you tell me why a, a ticket scalper, mm -hmm. uh, why ticket scalping, uh, why, why in these cases, these events can't like set their price. Well, these events could set their price differently, but for some reason, the consoles can't. Uh, the, you, difference like, the difference is yeah, sure. So the difference is going to be is that concerts are far more time limited, and there is an actual scarcity of supply that's not just limited by a uh, uh, manufacturer's ability to create more of something. There are only so many seats that you can sell to a concert. This against your argument, right? This would mean this would mean that, that it's even more possible for the console producers to to augment their prices than it would be for the for the uh, the person who sells like a the console. Uh, oh no, no. I mean, I, I think I think that I think I think that prices. Yeah, I think that ticket sellers could up their prices. I don't know why they don't, but I'm saying that these two like forms of scalping are, are around different types of products. I'd be uncomfortable comparing otherwise. I mean, people that sell tickets could raise their prices though. Sure. Okay, you're saying you're saying you'd un be uncomfortable. You'd be uncomfortable comparing them, but I'm asking you why, and the reason you gave me is an argument against your point. No, the, first of all, it's not an argument against my point to say that people could set prices higher. Like, they could, no, I, I didn't think that was an argument against your point. That's not what I was talking about. The example you gave was the idea that the uh, the ticket scalpers are going to work differently than console scalpers because ticket scalpers are like they, uh, the. What I'm saying is that the concert is what, only a short period of time. Whereas what I'm saying is that the type of, of what I'm saying is that the type of good. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the type of good being sold are, are like fundamentally different. Like, co I like, agree. I'm just okay. Telling that's you why. So that's so this is different. not going to be a matter of like the reason, make it the, sure. more and So the case. reason why I don't want to compare these two types of things is because if I allow you to compare them now and we run forward into the future and make comparisons, then I'm going to say, well, hold on, I don't want to compare these things. But then you're going to say, oh, well, you compared them in the past, so now you don't want to compare them because I don't suit your argument. So I'm telling you right now that I'm not in favor of comparing these two things because they are so absolutely different. But I don't think that I need to make a comparison here or even talk about these particular things in terms of asking the question of why don't console people set their prices higher. The reason you gave me earlier was that the, the, the console producers have a long period of time, right? And the concert venues have a short period of time. They have a short window. I'm asking you, why do you think that's going to make it harder for them to set their prices, it being longer? That would make it easier for them to adjust their prices over time. Okay, my question is, I just don't understand why... You brought this up ignoring it now. Wait, I'm not ignoring it. My, so I don't even know how we're off on this tangent. My initial question is, well, I literally wrote it down in front of me. Why don't console manufacturers set their price differently? So 
the reason console manufacturers don't set their price differently is because uh, uh, there are there's two factors I mentioned earlier. Another one, which we didn't mention, is the fact they don't have the opportunity to adjust their price. Uh, there's scalpers that exist in place of them adjusting their price. Hold on. So those people who could have otherwise bought from the console manufacturer at a raised, way, uh, raised rate, uh, instead they'll be buying them from the uh, instead they'll be buying it from scalpers at a uh, lower rate. So you think so? Then you genuinely believe that if scalpers didn't the, exist, you think that these consoles would be priced far differently. If scalpers didn't exist, do I think consoles would be priced differently? You asked me this day. earlier. The reasons why. And you said yes. Like okay. I have this so like nasty habit of like going like way up the tree of the argument, like something we talked about earlier that I've already answered and asking asking me the same question again. I'm not sure why you do it. Because we're getting derailed on a million different things. And you're so obsessed with getting like a debate lord point in that I can't like have a normal human conversation with you. You're like ultra fucking like heated, like trying to like get in like any single little point. I'm just trying to have like a conversation to follow your train of thought. That's all I'm doing. Okay, you're doing the same thing now that you told me you weren't doing earlier, which is like trying to posture as I'm trying to like trick you on some kind of like debate. Lord, Wait, debate do you have all of your conversations like this? Is this like real life? Like, do you have real life conversations with people like this? I don't know why you're, I don't know why you're doing this. Like, there's I'm just no, there's you no a question. Do it is your question? It's just it's just asking questions, right? You're just asking me like politely if I if I uh, have all my conversations like this. I'm asking if like every question is just like pointed like. Con or every conversation, you have like these pointed questions that are sitting on like knives edge. We're like, well, actually, what you're doing is you're trying to climb up the argument of tree. You're not actually responding to anything I'm saying. And actually, like, holy shit! Like, there's no, there's not like a tricky debate tactic we can use. I'm just trying to ask you, like, defend you, your you, point. I, okay, move and, back and like, move away from them or pivot every time that you like you realize your point was bad. I'm tr I'm not pivoting from a point. I'm trying to. Ha I, I don't even know which argument is here. I still haven't been able to discern it because we kept getting derailed so much. The reason that there was a difference, right, between the uh, the uh, the concert venues being able to adjust their price. And the console manufacturers being to adjust theirs was the fact that the concert uh, the concert venues exist for a short window, and the console manufacturers exist for a long window. I'm asking, why do you think this defends your argument? I I, I don't. I, I wouldn't point to ticket manufacturers explicitly to do it. The only reason I've ever brought them up is because the only statement you linked me had to do with ticket manufacturers. But it I'm saying that I wouldn't. I'm not... Yeah. Yes, around concert tickets. Yes, I don't know. I don't know why you don't think this is like you you. This is something you brought up. I'm just asking you why you no, brought this up. No, you're the one that linked me ticket scalping from concerts. I'm not the one that brought them up. You brought them up. I'm not saying you brought up ticket scalping. I didn't say you brought that up. I'm saying you brought this reason up as to why ticket scalpers would have a would have a uh, would have a uh, why, why ticket venues would have an easier time um, or would have a hard yeah I guess would have an easier time setting their price to match ticket scalpers than like console manufacturing. I'm just wondering why you think that is the case, and you, you're not wanting. To like answer me it's just you keep pivoting to this, like, okay wait the okay point. okay i'm sorry Let, we'll just completely forget my question i guess this is unanswerable by you for now so what is the okay, question that no 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 wait what is the I'll question write, that you're asking no 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 uh, what is the question that you're asking me then i'll come back to mine it's because you think i'm dodging a question okay so ask me what question you think i'm dodging and i'll try to answer as clearly as i can i think you're, you're it seems like you're like trying to like claim i'm dodging your question now you don't want to like, ask it again but uh, the question i was asking you earlier okay is, like i'm curious why you think that uh concert venues mm -hmm. who have a short window of time are going to have an easier time adjusting their prices than console manufacturers have a long period of time. I'm just asking you why you think this. Okay. Why do ticket prices have an easier time setting pr uh, prices versus console? Okay. So the re okay. So broadly speaking, the reason why I think that they will have an easier time setting prices is because one, the goods are more like localized and specific, meaning that you can probably be a little bit more precise in setting your prices versus a console that's going to be set in like a like global markets where there's more arbitrage available. So for instance, if I'm selling tickets to a concert in Chicago, I can very specifically price these in a given way that makes sense for this demographic. Whereas if I was selling tickets digitally worldwide, if I try to sell them cheaper in one area versus another, like people will take advantage of that arbitrage like they do with like Steam games and stuff. Um, that might be one easier, one reason why they have an easier time doing it. A second easier time doing it is that the prices can probably be a lot more um, like fluid or responsive to demand because there's a new concert every few months um, or, or there's like a new of a particular thing. So you can Price these a lot differently if you want to. Whereas with a console, you have one console with one name that makes it harder to adjust the pricing on this without consumer backlash. Um, <clears throat> I think those would probably be the two biggest reasons why I think it would be easier to price out concert tickets than uh, than consoles. All right, now that you've answered, we can talk about this, I guess. So in terms of localized versus specific, it, would you probably say that then for like console t uh, concert tickets that are sold globally, these probably this wouldn't apply. You probably say. Um, I would say it's probably harder to do so with those. Those are probably yeah more prone uh -huh. to other types of problems. Yeah, it's probably harder yeah, to set so, those ticket uh, price appropriately. Yes. So why exactly is it like the uh, the fact that it's like a global market? You said that it was because more arbitrage was available in, in the global market. Um, like more well, net. Yeah, a global a global market means that like you're gonna have more buyers chasing. I, I guess like yeah, more I consumer demand. Yeah. 
yeah so you would also have like yeah like you mentioned con more consumer demand and and like the the fact that there's more people who are doing arbitrage i don't see how this would like back you up like it seems like the also like the market is much larger larger globally as well in the case of uh in the case of arbitrage the, um, the market might be uh, much larger globally but the, i think that the, the size of the market the, the size of the consumers are growing way 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 faster than the actual supply yeah. of, of ticketed seats so for instance if i sell like a concert for five thousand people and i make that available to fifty thousand people or hundred thousand people in a market um Sure. That's like one thing. There might be like 10% more or, or two or, or I'm sorry, there might be like 100% or 200% the size of the market versus like what supply is available. I'm making these numbers up. Whereas like if I were to sell like a huge concert that might seat like 200,000 people, but that, those tickets were available for purchase like a billion people, right? That there's going to be way more people chasing the state. It's going to be harder to price those in a way that doesn't leave a lot of people feeling like really angry. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like the, the, the I'm not really sure why you think this would still apply then, though, because it doesn't make much sense that like uh, the fact that there's like more total arbitrage would really matter because they have like a, it's just a larger market overall. I'm not sure why more arbitrage uh, is like a total like total number of people doing arbitrage. Uh, I'm not sure why this would why this would be a point in favor. I mean, I'm just not well, linking my, it back my, to it. I don't even know what we're talking about a point in favor. I'm just saying that like the fact that you're having even more and more and more consumer demand chasing an increasingly limited supply means that there's going to be more people that are willing to pay absorbent exactly. or massive prices for. You have more consumer de demand chasing an increasingly limited supply. I don't, I don't think it's like, I don't think that in the case of console manufacturers is more limited than concert tickets. Concert tickets are usually more limited. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes. So why is it more, why did you say it like it's, it's a, um, uh, more limited or not? Maybe you didn't say more. When I say what more limited, say? I'm talking about selling a global concert ticket versus like a more localized one. And the global concert ticket, even if there are more tickets available, it's going to be more limited based on how many consumers are chasing those tickets. I'd probably agree that it's to, that uh, if you have like a larger, uh, uh, a, a larger amount of like demand generally you're going to probably like try to increase supply to match that right well no but that's the whole issue that's why i don't want to compare these things you can't increase the supply there's only so many seats available in a concert hall uh, you could pick a different venue that's not true at all no you're now you you're being weasley. hold on you, now, uh, you're you decide, now you're, you're being weasley now you're being weasley that's not weasley you could decide your venue based on the, you could decide your venue absolutely based on the uh, the number of people you expect to come like people do this all the time you don't like expect like a, your your indie punk rock band to have like nearly the same kind of like total seats in a concert hall as like the, uh, as like some 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 major celebrity you like are Adele, never right? going to peak a, you're never going to pick a venue that is so large that every person that wants to buy a ticket is going to be able to attend the concert uh so i, I guess it really depends on the concert though doesn't it because there are plenty of concerts where that does happen where they don't sell out sure of course there are but we're talking about a we're talking about a concert that you're selling tickets for on a global right. level. So I'm assuming there's like an A-list fucking celebrity or singer or whatever. Chances are for these wait, wait, wait. localized versus specific. Wait, what? We're comparing localized and specific. You mentioned localized and specific being the difference here. Well, I'm saying that you mentioned I'm okay. tricking you. This is one of the reasons why I don't want to compare tickets to like consoles. Is because tickets are going like there is necessarily a limit in physical space for any concert. Yes, you can have a bigger venue, but even on the largest venues, like you're still not gonna have enough seating for everybody that wants to attend. And you might not pick that a larger venue for a variety of reasons. You don't know if you're gonna sell that many tickets, you like, et cetera, like they can only perform in certain areas. Yeah, there are many different reasons why you wouldn't pick the larger venue. Like you don't think you'll have the demand for it, for example. So you're increasing supply to match demand, right? Well, but you can't do that, unfortunately, right? You can't. Well, you can only pick a you can only pick a concert hall once, but you can't change your supply afterwards. If if too many people start buying tickets, it's very rare that you could be like, okay, well, I'm going to change our whole concert. We're going to go to a different area now, guys. Like you can't do that, right? Harder to set prices on the spot than it would for a console. Wait, what? To make it harder to set prices, it's prices to adjust them to the market than it would for a console. Harder for harder for global tickets. I'm explaining the difference between global and local. We're not talking about consoles at all right now. We're just talking about global versus local tickets. Whoa, you just mentioned would, the thing you just mentioned would apply to all tickets. But what I'm saying is that it's probably more easy. No, no, no. You brought this up. It's, Go ahead. First of all, the only reason we're talking about this because your study talks about tickets, okay, for for yeah. concerts. What I'm saying is that I'm setting prices, up, setting prices. Setting prices for local concerts are always going to be easier than setting prices for massive global ones. You probably have more predictable like people showing up. You can pick the venue in a more appropriate setting. That's all I'm saying is that it's easier to focus prices on like a particular, like if I want to sell tickets for a small concert in Omaha, Nebraska, the pricing on that is going to look way different than in San Francisco, California. But if I was going to do like a massive concert inviting everybody, well, my price is going to be way too high for some areas, way too low for other areas. It's going to cause a lot of weird arbitrage and people are going to get fucked. That's all, that's all I'm saying. I don't think you even disagree with this. I don't disagree with that, but the point you brought up just doesn't apply to like the, the, the original point you brought up doesn't really defend your argument. My, so the original, 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 original thing before we got oh, derailed yeah, on I, all I, of this. I brought that up. Yeah. The, okay. the one about like tickets. Wait, I brought okay. tickets. Up. So, okay. I, do you, I, I, 
times now, I'm the one who brought tickets. Sure, I, I understand. No, no, yeah, I understand, but I'm not getting off tickets now. Okay, now I just want to clarify. Do you feel like I have adequately answered a question, or am I still avoiding a question? Did I answer your question? I, I feel like we didn't really get to the bottom of it, but I feel like you at least tried to answer the question, so I'm not going to like hold you to it or anything. If there's a question you want to ask, go ahead. Okay, so my question was, okay, let me talk for like 15 seconds here, okay? So my question is, it, it, it feels like initially you said that a producer is harmed because scalpers are selling things and they're collecting rents or they're, they're getting profit that the original manufacturer now doesn't have the ability to capture. That I sold a bunch of PlayStation 5s at $400 while scalpers came in and they sold at $900. That difference in what the scalper sells it for and what I retail it for, I'm losing that money is what you made it sound like. And now my question was, it seems as though console makers are setting a price for a particular reason. It's not necessarily 100% like economic like inputs out, but it's not a super like set price, you know, to maximize profit, but rather there's some other behavioral thing going on. So my question is, is, is it fair to say that scalpers are costing manufacturers money when the manufacturers themselves are setting the price points too low and seem unwilling to set it higher? That was my like overall question. Yeah. So to answer this question, like uh, to like to begin with the answer, so it doesn't like seem like I'm dodging or anything. Uh, is it fair to say scalpers are costing money? Y yeah, that's why I say it. Uh, so in regards to like specifically the reasons you gave as to why you think they're not like uh, no, I think the scalper has a huge influence over the price that a manufacturer sets. The existence of scalpers influences it. I think we both have to agree on this, right? How? And why? Probably, I don't agree on that. Why? I don't agree that a scalper has any influence whatsoever over the over the um, the price of the the price the manufacturer sets. If they do, it's very small, like less than 5%. Okay, less than 5% would still be pretty massive for like a manufacturer's profits. This would be like a huge amount of money they can put towards R&D. I don't, if, hold on. I don't think, I don't know if scalpers... We can assume it's 5% just for the sake of argument, right? Scalpers so aren't with, selling these for a 5% markup though. Scalpers are selling these for like 100 or 200% markup. If your interpretation of what I was saying is that like the manufacturers, like every single every single dollar that the, the, the scalpers make is a dollar the, the manufacturers have lost. I wouldn't say this. I'm saying that the manufacturers lose money, right? They're affected in a way that harms them. And it like decreases motivation in the future to create as good products because they're not, they don't have the same amount of incentive, right? Why could, do you think, okay, so if consoles are being listed, uh, okay, what is the retail of a PS5? Somebody tell me so I have the exact retail value uh, PS5. MSRP, like, uh, for, I think $399, okay. depending on which one you're getting. Sure. So four hundred dollars. So you're telling me that scalper, if if I'm curious, if Sony were to retail the PS5 instead of three ninety nine, if they retailed it at four ninety nine, do you think that there would be a, a, a surplus of supply that they wouldn't sell out? If they retail two versions um, of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's say every version is three ninety nine, or it's three ninety nine and four ninety nine. If they retail these at four ninety nine and five ninety nine, are you legitimately telling me that you think that these would not be sold out? That they would just be sitting on shelves unpurchased? That th they wouldn't be sold out. No, I, I think they'd probably be sold out. Sure. So then if that's the case, and we can very easily see that Sony could be increasing that money, why wouldn't they just set the price higher like that then? The, well, the reason they wouldn't set the price higher is because when they have like the chance to like adjust their price afterwards, what they're trying to do when they like, like when they like um, they set prices is trying to get somewhere around a number where they can like maximize their profits, right? And they're not going to do that perfectly. They'll never do that perfectly. Uh, okay, the if that's the case, then how is the scalper harming them? The scalper's harming them because what the scalper does is instead of being able to adjust their price down the line, like say like a month uh, um, a month down the line, like they're 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 releasing their their next batch instead of having them like uh, uh, give the ability to like uh, adjust their prices, they don't really have that price because all the people who would have bought it, all the people who would have bought it at the thousand dollar range have already bought it for a thousand dollars with but a they, scalper. But consoles don't adjust their prices. That's the whole point. Scalpers, uh, it, well, not scalpers, not scalpers. Console so manufacturers. What? They, they don't adjust their prices. They typically, when they retail at a price or something, yeah. I mean, there might be like a Christmas sale or whatever, they typically don't adjust their prices. Uh, console manufacturers absolutely do it in, in many cases adjust their prices. Sometimes they even release like special versions, right? Where you can buy these special versions, they'll be more that, expensive. That is, hold on, hold on. This is, hold on, hold on. That yeah. is either bad faith or I'm going to assume that you made a mistake. Bad faith. Okay, okay. So I'm going to assume that you made a mistake in saying that. Selling a special version of something is not the same yeah. as increasing your price. That is a totally different okay. type of so, argument. Selling, you can use a, you can use selling a different version of something to justify an increase in price without doing much to change the object, and that you, that you can limit this this uh, this increased price version to a more exclusive group of people without worrying about any of the negative PR backlash that you were talking about earlier, right? This sure. is so why wouldn't they retail? It. Why wouldn't they retail those products initially then, if they were trying to capture all the money that scalpers are making? Why wouldn't they just do that? Because they, they, they couldn't possibly capture all the money that scalpers are making. So what they do is they wait until they realize that like oh, okay we didn't we don't have like we didn't set the price nearly well enough uh, initially. To, uh, to maximize our profits for demand, because obviously there's a lot of people that demand it, and they, we could have gotten away with like a higher price. So now, uh, next time we like manufacture the next batch, we'll like release like the uh, like the the um, the Halo Three version 
of the Xbox 360. And this one will be like, it'll be green. It'll but be the these, same, things it, are like, planned, these things are planned way in advance. These things aren't done in response to market signals. Like these are planned like way in advance that they're going to have some special edition, blah, 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 blah. Well, special editions are absolutely done in response to market signals. Okay. I don't know how they're able to do that in response to market signals that don't exist yet when a lot of these things are announced before the initial consoles even made available for sale. But the special editions are sometimes announced just before the initial consoles are made available for sale. And the, like, the amount of special editions you manufacture versus like the normal consoles are like these. These are also decided on based on like predictions about the market. And then ne down the line, when you like change to uh, when you like make another special edition, you adjust these based on like mar by based on market indicators. I don't know why you think that the special editions are like somehow like removed from the market. It's absurd. It's not that they're removed from the market. You're you're making the you're making the argument that I would say is absurd that the fact that scalpers buy these consoles on day one at high markups is precluding the manufacturers from making special edition consoles down the line. I think that's absurd. No, it changes the it changes the amount of special editions they make. Probably I don't I, I don't even think that's probably true. Here's why it would, right? If you're running a company, so like say, like let's say that you're you're uh, Destiny, you're making the De Destiny Box 360, and there's a uh, there's a bunch of scalpers, and you see they're making a lot of money, and you see like, okay, I manufactured last time, I manufactured like um, like uh, 50 special editions and like 200 of the normal ugly ones, right? Uh, the special editions, uh, they, they're uh, they're uh, they justify Wait, that higher. You're price saying tag. that these console people are doing this in response to what consoles are what uh, scalpers are selling for? I'm doing what in response to what that, they're, for. that they're pricing these special editions based on the scalping market? No, they're pricing the special editions based on like what they estimate the uh, the demand would be. So the scalpers if can capable, like... Yeah, if they're capable of help. estimating that demand and everything, why don't they just set their prices more appropriately on day one? They're not able to estimate the demand perfectly, right? Like, well, then how are they able to estimate that demand? Because they can use more of the extra information they have afterwards. If scalpers didn't exist, they would, they would have more Wait, opportunities how, how could to change. You, how could you figure it out afterwards if there were no scalpers? How would you even know what somebody's willing to pay for a console? So you would know what what people are willing to pay for a console based on like how many sold out, right? No, so wait, wait, like, how would that tell you? You wouldn't. You wouldn't know for sure, but it could tell you information okay. that you could well, use. Okay. In this case, okay, okay, gotcha. I just want to update my my. I just want to update my prior argument then, because now, given your argument, you've given me a third party that's actually benefited by scalpers, and the manufacturers sure. themselves are benefited by scalpers because scalpers give you more price signals in terms of what you can set a special edition console. So that now you've given me a third party that are actually benefited by scalpers based on your own argumentation. Sure, you think so, but I'm, you've mm -hmm. given no reason as to why. Well, no, no, you, get, you gave me all the reasons why. You're telling me that console manufacturers apparently set future special edition prices that all happen to just be 50 or $100 exactly above the retail console for some reason. Yeah. This would be a way in which, yeah, in which mm -hmm. producers are to some degree uh, benefited by the use of scalpers as indicators. Like, this okay. is something that... Happens. Interesting. Okay, gotcha. Uh, all right. But there's downsides and upsides to things, right? It's not just, like, one soup, like really simple scalar value you can have in your head. Sometimes sure. things can have, like, good aspects and some bad aspects, right? So well, we that was those. my initial yeah. argument that some parties are helped and some parties are hurt by scalping. But yeah, a net negative or a net positive. And in the case of producers, it's a net negative. Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know that. Now I have to know if maybe it's possible okay. that producers are able to set their prices for their um, special edition consoles as efficiently as they are because the scalping market exists. And the scalping market really only applies to a very niche set of consoles sold, mm -hmm. which is right at launch day. And then they don't really impact it past that because you don't really scalp consoles when there's more supply available. So it might be that the value that scalpers add in, in terms of uh, determining what people are willing to pay for a console actually outweighs whatever small amount of profit is lost in the initial day one sales and that more money could be made later on selling special edition consoles using the market signals provided by scalpers so do you think the market signals provided by scalpers are like going to be uh the, the issue here is like the scalpers don't seem to just provide the market signals, right mm -hmm. those are helpful those are super beneficial i mentioned that earlier sure but the the scalpers don't just provide the mar market signals they also take up that part of that market niche right yeah they but that market niche is only going to be on day one launches which is going to be a minority of all the consoles ever produced it's going to be a small minority yeah. of the consoles produced. Probably, probably a minority of consoles that are produced are going to be, be ones that are sold scalp they probably agree uh, but I wouldn't. I don't think this is like this adds value in any way. I think this like this harms the producer in some small way. Well, it's not because you're telling me that it gives the producer appropriate prices to set their special edition consoles at, which seems to be very valuable. This is more like it benefits them, right, Destiny? There are other ways it harms them. I'm telling you about both, right? Well, what other ways does it harm them? So one, we have a very small percentage of consoles sold initially. They're going to lose profit on. Go ahead. The aspect of like they can look at like the the, the prices that are set, use it as an indicator, which is helpful. They can also no longer have the uh, they no longer have the the market to sell themselves. Uh, they no longer have this this market. Wait, what do you mean they no longer have the market to sell themselves? What do you mean? I'm trying my best to talk, but they don't have this niche market of people who just bought this like a console for like a huge markup who would otherwise buy the console like next time around. Well, but right? there's probably going to be a lot of people that will still buy it, a uh, special edition version. There probably will be a lot of people who will still buy the special mm -hmm. edition, but there will be slightly 
people, right? It's yeah, but the, the slightly less is probably going to be taken care of by how efficiently console producers can set their future special edition consoles, knowing how exact those prices are from scalpers. Okay. Uh, that was an interesting counter argument, but I don't know why you brought it up. I, I just didn't know there was a third party <laughs> held by scalpers. Um, to, to, to be to be one hundred percent frank, um, this whole yeah. tangent is ridiculous. I don't believe that console manufacturers set special edition prices related to scalping markets. Um, those those prices seem to be almost completely arbitrary because they always happen to be like exactly fifty or a hundred dollars over like whatever the console was retailing at. I didn't just say that like when they release a new uh, new special edition that they might uh, that they might set them based on like scalping. I said that they they also like change the production rates based on scalping. I mentioned a lot of other things that you shouldn't just like ignoring and throwing in the bus. But if we're gonna talk about like this specifically, specifically increase or changing your uh, your price or, the, or deciding your price for like a new special edition release based on like the price you think people will pay. I think they probably are already doing this as a special edition. You can charge way more for a special edition than you can for a normal console, and you look justified when you do it. You don't have to worry about the PR the PR hit. Yeah, I, I just, that still doesn't answer why they wouldn't just set the initial release consoles higher if you think there's so much money being lost no. to scalpers there. They don't know the initial demand, right? They, they haven't, they I haven't think happened. that both of us, it's pretty safe to say that they could probably retail that console for $100 more and it would probably sell out pretty easily. I think everybody in the world knows that. That's why they have a version of it that's $100 more. But that's not being sold right now. Yeah, because they're out of it. Because they could have sold it for even more than well, that, th right? I'm saying both versions could have been listed at $100 more and it would still sell out. Okay, probably. I, I'd agree, uh, but I don't think beforehand, like, I don't really think they had, like, the, the knowledge in advance to know, like, this would maximize their profits, right? The otherwise, they probably would have, you like, a, think an, another... Know that? They, they would have probably grabbed a white paint or something and sold it as, like, a special edition. Um, okay, I, maybe we just... I, I guess you think console manufacturers are incredibly clueless about how much they could sell on launch day, but... I Clueless. I think they make mistakes. Like nobody's nobody's able to like price match perfectly, right? They like, can even the scalpers. We're not talking about price matching perfectly. We're talking about a huge mismatch of supply and demand right now. We're not talking about a huge mismatch of supply and demand. We're we, talking about like a, a mismatch. We're, uh, we're talking about a huge mismatch. Oh, you said you said that the scalpers would make up a minority of the console sales, and now you're saying it's a huge mismatch. So you the, have to pick I, one. When I say huge, I'm sorry, I have to more further contextualize what I'm saying because you're really trying very hard not to. When I say huge mismatch, I mean huge huge yeah. mismatch like on launch day or like in the. Go ahead. When I say huge mismatch, I'm talking about like on launch day or in like launch week or launch month, not overall. I literally made the argument earlier that overall, anybody that wants a PS5 is going to get one. Okay. So then there's a, there's a mismatch then. It's not a huge mismatch, but it's some mismatch, right? Probably a minority of the console sales are a mismatch. And what they care about is their sales, right? They care about the bottom line because they're, they're a company, a privately owned company. They care about the bottom line. They care about those sales. And if they can't get nearly as many of those sales, they're competing with like this this other group who's like also like moving into like a potential niche market and like buying things out for them. Well, they're not competing with them. They're selling the consoles as well. Like they're buy these are buyers to them. Like they, they literally do compete with them though, because like they, Wait, they, no, the they don't. Like, what are you talking about? They, they absolutely do compete with pricing. So if I buy something from you and then I also am like reselling it like at, at like a different price, huh? like I could undercut you because you're competing with me again. Because like, I'm both the buyer. Scalpers and are not undercutting. <laughs> Sony. I'm not saying they are. It's an example in which you can compete, right? You can compete while still being the buyer. You could also Yeah, but if I am the monopoly seller, that's not and bad for me. If if you're going to buy from me and then you're going to sell to undercut me, you can't undercut me when I have monopoly ownership of the good. What do you mean? I undercut you, but it would be bad to overcut you, right? No, if you're overcutting me, I would just list my product at a higher price. You would. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so if you were a console manufacturer, you do that? Yeah, of course. So why are they doing that? I, we already talked about this. They're probably not asking, doing it. What? Asking questions, bud. Why aren't oh, they? Sure. Why aren't sure. they so the reason why they're not is probably because there's like this PR number in their head where selling a console at three ninety nine looks really good, and they don't have the ability to to um, adjust pricing. So um, particularly because consumers don't view it that way, that everybody would look at like, oh, it launched for a thousand dollars. That's bullshit. So they have to factor in that behavioral aspect of pricing rather than just like the raw. Like, you said you'd do it if you were a console manufacturer. What is the, uh, how would you do it? Oh, like, I'm sorry, hold on. To be clear, I don't know if I would do it if I was a console manufacturer. I'm just saying that if I had a good that somebody kept buying for me and relisting at a higher price, I would just list my good at a higher price. If I was a console manufacturer, I imagine they're making the decisions they're making for a reason. Sorry, go. go ahead. I'm sure to specify console manufacturer, but so you wouldn't try to do this. No, you clearly said <laughs> twice, twice that you would, uh, that you would if you were a console manufacturer. 
you're you're gonna like continuously like, call me like Weasley for okay. the entirety oh, of this then, discussion. You know what? Then I weaseled and I misspoke. I'm sorry. Or I weaseled. I actually didn't even misspeak. I was intentionally weaseling you to call me. Okay. So now that I have admitted to my weaseling, if I was selling cool. a good, okay, and somebody was buying it out for me constantly and reselling at a higher price. I would just sell that good at a higher price. Now, if I was a console manufacturer, I'm assuming, and this is consistent with every argument that I've made so far, okay, so I don't know why I just tried to weasel you, but I would assume that the console manufacturers are probably selling these at a particular point because that's like the most PR-friendly point to sell things at. That would be my guess. Okay, and there's a more, pre uh, a more PR-friendly way, a more PR-friendly option through which you can sell things at an increased rate, an increased, uh, an increased both, uh, both demand, and like uh, you, can, you can increase your supply in this specific area. It's called a special edition, right? Special editions have a, have a, uh, a limited quantity of demand, and you can increase those if you want to sell more. Uh, Why you don't they do sell those on day one? Like you can make like a, a light version or like, an, like, a, like a slim version. Yeah, why don't they, they sell those on day one then? They don't sell them on day one because they don't really know in advance what the the, the, the sufficient kind of demand they're going to have, right? They try to they try to make it so that like their their demand is like uh, uh so they they can they can sell out so they're not overproducing. That's but not they don't true. Want There's to, no evidence of that. There's no evidence of what? That people are arbitrarily limiting their um, supply in order to increase consumer demand. That's never been proven. I didn't say that they would limit their supply to increase demand. That's what you implied by saying that they don't know oh, what the supply is, so they're producing too little or whatever. I, I, Close to implying that you're just reading things that aren't there. So the what I said, right, was that they, they don't want to like make more supply than the demand that exists, right? So you're so implying sometimes. that the reason why they're not making more supply is by a choice. It's not by a choice because they literally can't manufacture the good fast enough. That was your implication. They, literally, they absolutely could build more manufacturing facilities. No, they can't. That's now, not true. Holy, sh why do you, why don't you think that they could build more manufacturing facilities? What aspect of like computer technology do you think that like it's going to like make this not? A because not everybody wants to just build out entire custom supply chains in order to do this. There's a cost associated with opening entirely new fabrication plants to make the chips and the hardware and everything there necessary to produce these consoles. I agree. When you like commission some, when you commission some like other source who like produces your motherboard, for example, like you, if you're commissioning Foxconn and you want them to like make X amount, like they're also you're also competing with like all of the other people who are also like having that same company. They're you're, that same company you're commissioning also manufacturing these uh, these other objects, right? So you could, you could when you're negotiating here, pay a slightly higher price to have even more produced, uh, but you'd be, it'd be like an, at an increased rate, right? So you're still trying to balance things out. Yeah, and they've done that. They've booked the, the, the time in the manufacturing plants yeah. in order to manufacture After more and more consoles. They, yeah, they, in fact, they do afterwards once they've realized that the demand was actually more than they expected. No, uh, Are you, wait, 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 hold on. Let me just understand what you're saying. You yeah, think that they, the wait, you and think that- sells out and you have huge scalpers, uh -huh. and you realize, oh, yeah, so I can manufacture even more. I can manufacture the special edition even more. Hey, Wait, guys, okay. we can manufacture more special edition. I just want to make sure that I understand it. You, honest to God, okay, you really uh, think, now you can tell from the way that I'm phrasing this that I hope you don't agree with this, okay, you really think that Sony, okay, entertainment, that these people are not having deals signed to manufacture more consoles until fucking launch day. You really believe that? You think wait, that they're wait, waiting wait. till launch day to figure I, out if they need to make more consoles or not? At what point during this discussion did I say anything coming close to that? And can you point out like exactly what it was? So you're making it sound like with with, with everything you just uh, said, you I'm literally. Making it sound like, I'm not actually saying what you just said. I said, right? Okay. I, I mean, if you want, it. okay, if you really want to play this game, because I'm trying to clarify. That's why I'm asking you questions. I'm asking you clarifying questions. And you're acting like I'm trying to nail you down. This is hold on. I just want to say that one of the funniest because I know you'll accuse me of this afterwards. One of the funniest things that people do when they accuse me of debate tactics is like weaseling. Them. All I've been trying to do is ask clarifying questions, figuring your position. If it's yeah, wrong, heard, you can very clearly just say like that's not what I said or that's not what I meant. But instead, you're I've trying to never, make it sound like I'm trapping you by asking you to be like to, fig, to explain I've things you've just never said. Like, that's in the entire it. course of this conversation, accused you of any Weasley debate tactics. You've done the same thing to me at least five times. Okay. All you have to do, okay? I'm just, I'm asking, I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm asking a clarifying question because you made it sound like Sony is waiting to produce more consoles until they figure out if they sell on launch day. Is that not what you meant to say? Am I, am I misunderstanding you there? No, I said either. I said they, they know, they know that like after launch day, they know more about the demand of the product, right? Because they've just launched their product. They know, they obviously would clearly know more about the demand. You have to agree with this, right? No, I don't agree with that. You they know more about the demand after they release their console. Do you, well, I mean, they might, but I don't think it's relevant to their initial production of a console. Do you wait? Do you think that they do you do you think that they intentionally underproduce on day one? I, I think that what they shoot for is probably going to be something like estimates, like somewhere close to demand without overproducing, right? Okay. You never want to overproduce on day one. That would be really bad. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. So do do so? Do you think that they like? Yeah, fuck, I don't know what to say. I've read a lot of, this is like meta information, but like I've read articles and stuff, but this is just not true. Usually they just, um, they, ju they okay. just can't, they just can't, they can't okay. manufacture. Link what? Okay, link to those articles? Uh, I'm sure. The most common argument has to do with Nintendo. So Nintendo, okay. um, 
<clears throat> artificial scarcity. That's the uh, scary term that people use to describe this a lot. Well, but I've never said anything referring to artificial scarcity. Okay, I'm sorry. So let me, I'm just I'm okay. just asking questions, bro. I'm trying not to narrow yeah, you I'm just trying. It sounds to me that it sounds you're like. You're, you're, earlier, you're saying it right. It's not, you're, you're it, mocking you, me. You, you, I'm not yeah. mocking. I'm. I don't know how to ask you a question without you getting offended. I don't know how. You, I don't know how to ask you a question without you getting like seriously fucking triggered. I, I just don't know how to do it because you're incapable of having like a normal Relax. human conversation. Um, okay, so it feels like you're saying that if Sony was, if if Sony wanted to, they could have produced more consoles for launch day. Okay, I don't believe that's the case. Okay, if you have articles showing that Sony couldn't have produced any more than they produced, feel free to send me those. Okay. Um, Here's, Please make sure it's not about something else. Please make sure it's about, it's about the thing we're just discussing. Okay, discussing I, have right to, I don't have this offhand, but I've read a lot okay. about like Nintendo's. So here's a Forbes article related to Nintendo's artificial scarcity. Okay. Okay, once again, I'm not talking about artificial scarcity. You mentioned that earlier. I explained why that wasn't the case. Right? Okay, can you explain why it isn't artificial scarcity when you could have manufactured something more on launch day, but you chose not to? Uh, because you can manufacture... It, this would be like any, any case of like controlling your supply would be an example of like artificial scarcity if that's your definition of artificial, artificial scarcity, right? Sure, what's your definition so of artificial say, scarcity? Yeah. So if I say something along the lines of like, um, it's it's artificial scarcity that instead of making like three hamburgers, I, I or instead of making like a million hamburgers, I only made three. That wouldn't really be realistic because obviously like artificial scarcity refers to the idea of it being artificial. Scarcity, I agree right? with scarcity what you're saying. However, my my initial but, contention was that aspect of like trying to like make sure that your demand matches or make sure that your supply matches demand. That's not artificial scarcity. That's just what every single company on the planet does. Sony would be manufacturing more consoles if they had the ability to do so. They didn't think that they weren't going to sell out or that there was even a risk of that. Here's a Bloomberg article. Sony cuts PlayStation 5 forecast by 4 million due to chip woes. Makes it sound like it's a manufacturing problem and not they're trying to match their supply and demand problem. I agree that there are many cases. Sony Corp you, you might... has... Well, read the article. If you want to... Yeah, so Sony Corp has cut its estimated PS5 production for this fiscal year by 4 million units down to around 11 million units following production issues with its custom designed system on chip for the new console, according to people familiar with this matter. So it doesn't sound to me like they're trying to match their production immediately with the demand. It sounds like they're making as many as they can and releasing as many as they can, and this is as many as they could get out. No, the issue is like they were trying to match the demand. Like they, they realized there are chip issues and now they have to update the They're going to have to like deal with the chip issues afterwards, right? And this is so the like story of every single console manufacturer. It's really hard to meet the demand on these when you start manufacturing this. It's not that they only make like a, a certain amount and then the factory just sits there idle. They literally sell this shit as it comes off the line. Uh, I would agree that like they sell it as they, as it comes off the line. I don't think like, I'd ever disagree with that. But the issue is like they don't they control the amount that come off the line. Like they have some influence over that, right? No, and they, they can't just book an arbitrary number of factories. This is all like pretty carefully like like you planned. Think that the, uh, what factory do you think main or like what company that like, owns owns the factory that manufactures like PS4 chipsets? Do you think uh, do you think like that they don't commission it from anyone else? They're just working with PS with the the PS4. They're just Sony like doing it in house. or yeah, something? Yeah, no, it's not, dude. I don't know if you understand. It's really, really, really hard to fabricate these chips. There are only so many companies in the world that can do this, right? That you can't just you can't just go down to any random company in fucking Mexico or Venezuela and be like, "Hey, can you fabricate me a bunch of fourteen nanometer chips for my console?" That's a very, very, very like specialized set of skills that only so many factories around the world can do. I agree. And these factories around the world that specialize in like in making these kind of chips don't just make Sony's. They make a lot of different kinds, right? Exactly, which is Sony. even more stronger to my argument that they probably book out this manufacturing time way before launch day. They don't figure out their demand or supply or whatever on launch day. They probably make as many as they can and they book that time years in advance to continue to making them. Figure out demand and supply on launch day. Do Wait, wait say that one more time? Estimates. I said they make estimates. Yeah, but those estimates probably have nothing to do with the manufacturing they're doing for the next couple of years. Never said they did this on launch day. You're just like straw manning my position here. <sighs> okay. Okay. All right, well. Do you um do you have any other concerns or issues or questions? Um yeah, this was like a fun conversation so far. Uh, if uh, this is probably something that's not gonna be like super complicated, and I'm kinda like on the fence about it, so you can maybe move me over. In regards to the recent like Twitch um changing first playthroughs to um to blind playthroughs, right? Yeah. Um, so why do you think that's an issue? I mean, or, or they change blind play playthroughs to first playthroughs. Why do you think that's an issue? I think because blind playthrough is a pretty descriptive thing that had a pretty set in stone meeting, and now we have to find another term for it. Didn't the term they use say like first playthrough or something? I'm not really sure what the difference is here. Yeah, so in the gaming community, a blind, so nowadays games are very complicated and people use a lot of wikis and everything to like walk through it. Typically when somebody says they're doing a blind playthrough, that means that they're playing through the game with no help, no walkthroughs, no wikis. They don't know anything about it. It's just like a going in first time, totally blind. Usually when somebody says it's like a first playthrough, that you that could imply that like, oh yeah, like I'm using wikis, I'm getting help from chat, et cetera, et cetera. There's usually like a difference between those two things. Okay, so the idea would be like it's a combination of like first playthrough and like a 
then no spoilers. Basically, yeah, it's like no spoilers, first playthrough, yeah. no help, basically, yeah. Why not just not use these two tags instead of using the blind playthrough tag? I'm not sure what the why this is like a harm. I'm not saying I'm not saying like you're a bad person if you like use blind playthrough, right? I just well, don't know why it's not like sure because one, I don't believe there was any harm involved in calling something a blind playthrough. I think that blind and deaf have yeah. plenty of different connotations. Right. And then like um, a little, a little, somebody out there is probably like a over it. Like this, no matter what it is, like somebody's getting harmed by it. Probably, but I think that at, at that case, we're getting into the level where literally anything that refers to any bodily function whatsoever can be some kind of discriminatory thing, which seems strange. So for instance, ironically enough, that woman opened her tweet with, happy to see that we changed something. It's like, I'm sure there are a lot of blind people that would be happy to see. Do we need to get rid of that expression? Like, it just seems kind of silly to me. So I don't think the issue is like somebody's like, the issue here is like this is a really really easy thing to change. It's like you go into like a JSON database and you like remove one one line and it's done, right? Well, but, but we're not just like talking about renaming the tags. We're also talking about um, like changing a, a terminology that has been understood for a couple decades, which isn't. I mean, it can be changed. It's not a huge deal, but it's kind of. Um, the Twitch ban. The Twitch ban. The um, the use of this phrase, phrase blind playthrough. Um, I feel like there might be an implication down the road that it will be, but I don't believe they've banned it right now. Okay. So I don't see what's the issue with just like removing like the one tag from the JSON database and it's like not using it anymore. I, I guess like the issue that some people have is that it feels performative and performative wokeness on, on this part yeah. can leave some people feeling pretty burnt. So for instance, I think it's um, I, T, I, I, I don't remember the definition for it, but there's like there's a whole side of the Internet that most people don't know that has to do with like accessibility tagging and like very rich format sure. HTML documents that make things more accessible for people that have uh, that the Internet Absolutely. has made like, yeah, uh, has made a lot of progress on over the past decade. So much tremendous progress. And Twitch just is a garbage when it comes to any of this. So to see like some corporate talking head come out and talk about how happy they are, they remove some tag when Twitch remains like a relatively inaccessible site when it comes to those like rich element tags probably leaves or at least from some of the blind people that I was reading on Twitter said that it leaves them feeling a little bit burned out about it. Yeah, that makes sense. I just why can't they like why not pressure them to do this and like uh, use this as a lever to do that instead of like saying that like this in and of itself was like an oh my god kind of issue. It doesn't seem like a big a big deal. It's it's not a big deal. I don't think it's that big a deal. I don't think anybody is going to be yeah. severely impacted by it. It's just dumb. But like uh, the problem is, is that anything you talk about on Twitter always seems like the end of the world and a big deal. Now I'm not saying that you. I'm using you a lot. I don't mean you personally, but I mean like anytime like somebody mentions something on Twitter, like if I get on Twitter and it's like I can't believe these fucking camera stands are so annoying now. Like people are like oh my god, like is this that big? Well, no, it's just annoying, right? I don't think the blind thing is like that annoying. It's just kind of a dumb thing. Okay, yeah, it, it it seems like a lot of people are getting like super up in arms about it. And like I understand like it's performative wokeness, which is like any example of like a corporation being woke is going to be performative, right? Even if they fix the meta tags, which would be like actually helpful to like huge numbers of blind people, I would still be performative at the end of the day. So I don't, I don't. Uh, well, but at like the very least, like that's when I say performative. Be. Usually, what I mean is it's yeah. like some sort of message that carries no function behind it. I don't know if we can agree categorically on that definition, but like that's going to be the broad one that I use right now. So like for instance, if somebody I, changes I, like your I'll, I'll let, when I when I hear you use a term, I'll just interpret in good faith what it means, and hopefully in the future when you see other people using terms, you can just interpret in good faith what they mean, like when they use the term value. Sure, I don't think they were using value in the strict term that you're, using, but regardless, um, sure. if, if somebody was to change Twitch's site in a way that made it more accessible to the inaccessible or updated their uh, their accessibility features, even if that might be performative wokeness, there is a real function at the end of the day that's been carried out there, so I think that's fine. Okay, I yeah, no, in this way, I completely agree with you. There's a lot of like bad aspects of what Twitch is doing here, but I think that in I think a lot of people are probably a little bit more upset than necessary at the blind playthrough thing. It doesn't seem like you are. It seems like you probably have like a level headed. Um, sure, uh, and I imagine it. that like most people probably are, but like the nature of like online anything yeah. is that every time you have any issue with anything, it always seems like the end of the world. That's just how it is. I'm sure there are some because there's still the whole anti SJW crowd exists, so, and I'm sure some of them are like super fucking ass mad about it. But at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. Like like I think the changing of like blacklist and whitelist I think is really stupid, but it's not. Something I care about at the end of the day. I'll probably just say allow list or deny list in like five years. I don't really care that much. I just think it's kind of dumb. But yeah, I I completely agree. In case like these like um uh, sort of like edge cases like that don't seem to make a huge difference. I think there are some cases like in changing like master slave keywords and get or something where it's not like it's going to be super difficult to do and it, like it could make a lot of people feel like way more comfortable about using something right. Maybe. So I'm, yeah, you probably agree. Like and, and broadly, like it's okay to like change language and uh, like uh, change language when it's like really easy to do. Right. Yeah, of course. If it's not higher or far back end. Say again? Yeah, if it's not like a big deal, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I think we agree about this one then. Okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, and just like, uh, but before I, I don't want to do this without your permission, right? Because your platform, oh, oh, would you be okay with this? whatever, go for it. Plug all, all right. you want. Uh, anybody in chat, uh, my my channel is S-I-N-T-H-E. I'm a YouTuber. Uh, come check me out. I've got like, I've got like four subscribers, which is basically PewDiePie. Um, 
you have a good one, Destiny. This was like a pretty fun conversation. It was a, there was a, a little bit. Of, it was a little bit stressful, but I, I enjoyed it overall. Sure. Do you want to? Okay. So there's some guy in my chat called Rage Pope who likes to argue economics. Mm-hmm. Do you want to chat with him for a few minutes? Oh, uh, we could we could schedule something sometime. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Have fun. All right, you have a good one. Bye. Peace. Okay. Am I are my biases just out of control, or was that guy like? He he was like super fucking on edge this whole conversation, right? Or am I crazy? I can't tell if I'm getting gaslit or not. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. He seemed big mad. Hi, what's up? Sorry, I, I think you had to go. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, I, I guess uh, I, I just don't even understand if he's even studying economics. It sounds like he's like a failed Marxist who's struggling his way through school trying to... Okay, find- let's calm down on the at-homes, okay? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so do you want me to like give like the actual take against scalping that uh, I assume these lefties kind of want to... Sure, uh, give us the actual, you know? the steel man, yeah. the best version take against scalping, go for yeah, it. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to tell you the sad story of Tiny Tim. So... Tiny Tim was born into a poor family, and he has a defective leg, so he has to walk around on crutches. Mm-hmm. And uh, his family is poor, so they put him to work as a chimney sweep uh, from the age of four. Mm-hmm. And because he's uh, disabled, he gets paid a lot less than all of the other uh, chimney sweeps. Mm-hmm. And so for the past seven years, he's been sweeping chimneys, getting little bits of money uh, every now and again and saving up. And his, uh, but, uh, and his whole desire in life is to buy a PS5 on launch day so he can play the new Spider-Man game. Now, uh, what happens is he's got lung cancer and he's dying, and his only desire in life is to get this PS5. But when he goes to buy it on launch day, well, a corporate uh, or a scalper buys it, sells it to a corporate lobbyist uh, who gives it to Mitch McConnell to pay as a bribe for uh, you know the BP oil disaster uh, in the uh, Gulf. And so, what's actually happening here is that the value to society. <laughs> Okay. So, so the value to society is different than the monetary value that he's able to pay, right? Sure. And so that, that's basically what it is, is that the monetary value that some people are able to pay to scalpers are different than what the true value of uh, to society uh, would be for that um, <clears throat> yeah, for that transaction. Sure, I can understand that. Couldn't we? Couldn't you actually? <clears throat> couldn't you, in some ways, argue that that would make it more beneficial to scalping? that scalping is only distributing products to the people that are most able or most willing to spend a large amount of money on it. And these people are more likely to utilize that good. Yeah. Than some, right? Couldn't you just make that argument? Yeah, yeah well, yes, that's exactly what's happening because uh, everything's being measured in dollars, though. Mm-hmm. There is uh, some things that are non-market that are kind of being lost in that transaction, right? So yes, you're 100% correct. When these scalpers are happening, they're getting uh, or they're taking advantage of uh, what essentially is a consumer surplus. Mm-hmm. So I can find like a, a graph to send you off of that. But basically, the idea is you have a downsloping demand curve and an up-sloping uh, supply curve, right? So at the end of the day, when uh, Sony creates 500 million PlayStation 5s to sell, and there's demand for 500 million, the eventual equilibrium price for that will mm-hmm. be $500 or whatever they're selling it at right now. Sure. But along the way, when they're only releasing, you know, a million on day one, a million mm-hmm. in the next month when the manufacturing comes through, well, there's a lot of uh, consumer surplus that's uh, not being met. So the scalpers are buying it at the $500 price that's set, and then they're selling it to the people with the highest consumer surplus. So mm-hmm. from a market efficiency perspective, uh, they're giving it to the people most able to pay that. But um, it, it's not necessarily to the consumers like Tiny Tim who have the most value from that PlayStation 5, right? Sure. Or we would say most social value, even though if Tiny Tim was truly going to die soon. It sounds like any <laughs> PS5 year subscriptions are ever going to be wasted, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, wait, so here's scary. something that I'm curious about, and I think I know the answer. Probably was I probably already said it. Why don't console manufacturers just mark up prices on day one so much? Is it just because of the PR uh, shit, basically? Well, yeah, so there's some value uh, into being seen as scalping. Uh, if you look at how much money uh, the... Uh, the manufacturers make like PlayStation and Xbox. Most of it isn't on hardware sales. Uh, a lot of times they so are like first party game shit and everything, right? Yeah. So like uh, every game that's developed and sold on your console, you're getting a cut when you're paying for Xbox Live. You're getting a cut when you buy all the premium uh, currencies and games. They're taking a cut. Mm-hmm. There's uh, yeah a ton of uh, that going on. So yeah. uh, the the big uh, thing with that though. Oh, hold on. How do I turn off uh, notifications on uh, Twitch? I'm getting a bunch of uh, 
Oh, that's right. On Twitch, I have no idea. Or not? On, well, I have uh, OBS, and um, the follow notifications are. Mm-hmm. Give me a sec. Um, volume mixer. I'm just gonna turn OBS off. All right, there we go. That, I think that should do it. So. Wait, can you hear uh, me now? Yeah, yeah, I can oh, hear you. I, I just turned off uh, OBS sound and my gotcha. sound settings. So okay. So. Uh, we're talking about the manufacturers selling it on day one. So there's only so many dollars that they can make from essentially price discriminating all the way down. So let's say mm -hmm. day one, the first million units would clear at $1,500, right? Mm -hmm. And then month two, they would clear at 1200 And then month three, they would uh, clear at 800 And then mm -hmm. month four, they clear at 600 uh, They can estimate those curves pretty effectively. It's not going to be totally perfect. And if they overshoot in terms of price, well, then they can just... Uh, knock the price down a bit every day but the cost to them that they find is that there's a lot of ill will of like oh well why are you charging me so much uh, and yeah people that's gonna be it's will, PR, yeah yeah right and then well there's people that'll like choose to wait a little bit when that uh, choice is made explicitly right mm -hmm. so some people who would pay fifteen hundred dollars to a scalper might say oh look at the uh, sony's uh, schedule of ps5 prices right well i'm willing to wait two weeks to save three hundred dollars but they don't think about that uh, about it in the same kind of manner when the scalpers are the one listing it for uh, twelve hundred or fifteen hundred dollars. So you're saying that like if on day one a scalper's listing it for eight hundred, but you you would buy that. But if like Sony was listing a, a something for like eleven hundred, and then like a week later they were well, listing it for eight hundred, well, no, no, no. and then so, it was like a week later they were listing it for five hundred, you wouldn't wait. You, but you also wouldn't buy it from Sony because you feel like you're getting fucked, kind of. Uh, yeah, well, because then it's you've explicitly made the time value of that money clear to the consumer, and then they can make like a better decision about it, right? Sure. Uh, and then they may think that, oh, well, the price is going to go down if I keep waiting. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, if they do it from the perspective of a uh, of a uh, uh, sorry, so uh, right I now, if they buy a, from a scalper, it's unknown when the supply of PS fives is going to increase and how much is going to be available, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But for but if Sony made like if they had a transparent price schedule, then you would know that like every two weeks you're literally getting another two hundred bucks if you wait, right? Uh, yes. Uh, apparently they can't hear you. I don't know why. Um, anyways. Um. Uh, how come? Okay, yeah, so uh, I guess like another um, thing that's kind of brought up, I guess, a lot with this whole scalping thing mm -hmm. is um, about uh, whether or not people, or I guess he brought it up at the end, is like whether or not they can fully uh, like meet the, or satiate the full demand on the market, right? So you yeah. saw him say, well, why didn't they just release like 50 million PlayStations? Mm -hmm. So there's a few things with that. So there is a little bit of uncertainty about like demand, right? But for the most part, uh, they know in the first year, uh, they have a fairly accurate view of the consoles that they have. And then if they don't sell it in the first year, well, they'll still have some residuals that they'll sell out over the remaining years and they can cut their contracts earlier. It costs sure. a lot of money to build out these facilities and it takes a lot of specialized knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to like build one of these manufacturing facilities, it costs uh, like in the order of several billion dollars if they just wanted to say, oh, well, we want more on-demand production mm -hmm. and the market doesn't actually demand that many PlayStations uh, on day one as they would kind of need to build that. Mm -hmm. The second thing that uh, they would kind of argue is, well, maybe they should wait until they make enough PlayStations so that there isn't scalpers. But at that time, you're essentially losing money to a deadweight loss because you have to store all these PlayStation 5s in warehouses and warehouses uh, cost money to build. It takes money to like keep to transport them, uh, them in and out. And it's like a whole other type of like chain to your distribution or whatever that's probably going to be annoying fuck to manage yeah yeah it, it's a huge uh it's a huge pain in the ass to manage mm -hmm. and then it, it's also like it, it just costs society money right what value does society get from leaving playstations in in a warehouse uh, so to speak like there's no utility from people uh like utilizing them at that point right or, or at least you can argue if someone has a playstation well at least somebody's having fun rather than just like leaving it locked up uh, a lot of the I guess another big problem uh, that people have with the uh, release schedule, or I guess that they advocate for is for the manufacturer to be able to price discriminate. Well, in other contexts, they argue explicitly against that, right? So if we look at pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of this price discrimination as well, right? Or they say- With insurance uh, companies kind of, and people paying cash, or what do you mean? 
Uh, well, yeah, that and uh, within like uh, other uh, across borders and oh, like, across countries, countries too, well, right? True, true. Yeah, so like, let's say that you have like an American American insurance company. Well, they'll pay a fuck ton of money for your drug, mm -hmm. so you're gonna sell it to them for five hundred thousand dollars a dose, right? Mm -hmm. And then, man, drugs uh, sure are hell of expensive here in America. But if you're like rich in America and you don't have insurance, well, they'll, they'll probably sell it to you for like fifty thousand dollars a dose, right? Sure. And then, if you're very poor in America, then you know th there's uh, programs that these pharmaceutical manufacturers that have that say, hey, we'll, we'll make sure you get this drug that you need for free and then you do it the same thing uh you go over to europe right so mm -hmm. europe uh instead of uh, selling their government uh healthcare programs uh you know the drug for five hundred thousand dollars well they'll sell it to them for twenty thousand dollars because you know twenty thousand dollars is still a profit towards the cost of manufacturing mm -hmm. and then if you go to somewhere like uh, india or china or russia or uh, any developing nations well then the drug may cost like 50 bucks there 20 bucks because they're able to price discriminate and kind of capture that whole uh consumer surplus curve right mm -hmm. yeah um yeah even more um even more relevant steam does this as well right or they used to where or different platforms would uh price games differently based on the region and then people were getting really ass mad because certain companies i think um gog something green or i think uh, green man gaming and i think um there's another big company that does but they would like buy up copies from like fucking lithuania or some shit and then they would sell it to like western countries and shit at like Mm -hmm. Because they were being sold in uh, smaller countries or whatever, they were being sold at a uh, massively discounted rate so that people could afford it. Galaxy of Gaming, maybe. Oh, and G2A. Uh, as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so that's like a thing. And I mean, there's still like regional pricing discrimination between games, right? So mm -hmm. Steam does this in Russia because uh, their currency is worth so little. Uh, Russian consumers choose to pirate games uh, rather than paying $60 because that's like weeks or months of uh, income, right? Uh, I don't think Russia is that far behind the USD, no? Is that true? Uh, for the very poorest of the poor. What is the median, is the median income Russia in Russia? Wait, wait, not GDP per capita. That doesn't say What is the median income in Russia? There's no way that it's like, is it really that much lower than it? Uh, it be like 30K? It's about $12,000. Uh, they got really screwed up to the 2008 recession. Damn. Like, like even like the median Russian is making, you know, I don't know. Uh, minimum wage is what eighteen thousand a year, so they're making two thirds of minimum wage. Interesting. Yeah. So instead of paying sixty dollars per game, they'll choose to pirate. Yeah. But if they sure. region lock the game, then the Russians will pay the, their equivalent of sixty dollars, and so they'll get a lot more out of it. They just make it so the keys are bound to the Russian region. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What's up, Moody Cakes? Not much. Just hanging out. Oh yeah. Are you ready to come help us finish this mod pack? <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah. almost done. Um, almost. I've got yeah, a few achievements left. Fuckers, dude. Well, hello there, Dan. Well, I just wanted to come in. Hear you guys talking about scalping. I think I already solved this issue. Sony should have just released before they released the PS5 for three months. They released the Doctors Without Border Special Edition PS5 for those three months. They cost fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. and then they just oh, gave those are a thousand ones. <laughs> and then they just gave a thousand dollars profit each time to Doctors Without Borders. And who's going to be able to bitch about that? I don't That's know why they wouldn't just get like the fucking CEO to walk around the factory with some dumbass sticker and put first edition on like the first batch of console and just sell those at like fifteen hundred each. Like why not? I don't know. I, I I don't I. Well, I understand. It's probably again. It's probably just like a PR thing, right? Like. They yeah, so you do, look bad, yeah. Like you can set the upper price on scalping too, can't you? Right. So if a normal PS5 is five hundred bucks, you go out and for three months you release the Doctors Without Border edition for like eight hundred, and you put out as many as you can, and then you kind of know the upper price of what people are going to pay for the well, regular PS5. You can also look at uh, historical launches of past consoles, right? So when you're looking for like the PS5 launch date. So like, well, let's look at what happened when we launched the PS4 and the 3 and the 2 and the 1. And what did Microsoft's latest uh, launch look like, right? What does Nintendo's launch look like? You can use these to build accurate pricing models as to what prices the market will accept. And if you, even if you overshoot on the price and you don't sell as many as you can, but you still have that inventory that you can reduce the price down, right? Are you sure this wouldn't fuck um, up like the PS4 launch? So for example... Say the PS4 was priced at $1,000. I'm pretty sure a lot less people would buy it, not because the price was expensive, but because it puts a bad taste in their mouth. Well, yeah, that's like, part well, of why they're probably yeah, priced the way That's why it's are, like yeah. at 400 yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and you can kind of see this uh, in ticket sales, right? So a lot of these bullshit fees and everything is basically kickbacks to the uh, arena holders, but they pass off the negative, uh, the the, the, the uh, ill will essentially to like Ticketmaster, right? So Ticketmaster well, is the one. A lot of these companies have like explicit agreements with Ticketmaster as well, right? Where they actually like reserve part of their stock. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they do. They give it to Ticketmaster in exchange for a big cutback in that scalping price, but they're able to pass off that extra now or the, the negative ill will onto Ticketmaster. The Ticketmaster. People get mad at Ticketmaster, yeah, even though they literally have first party yeah. contracts with the initial ticket sellers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the companies would be like, well, or well, like the bands would be like, well, it's not our fault. The Ticketmaster does that. Da, da, da. Yeah, exactly. Because people are idiots. So. I think Dan's idea was good, though. You know what? Well, you, because, you, because you don't have them for fifteen hundred dollars, thousand dollars goes to charity or whatever, and it like puts a upper balance on the scalping. I don't know. I think that was good, Dan. I mean, how can you yell at Sony for that too? They could say, you know, we're doing this to curb um, scalping, and we're helping a good cause, and uh, yeah, good PR. Yeah, some good shit. Exactly. Well, I, I think the brand risk is like uh, what, they, what they would do is they wouldn't want, ever want to be the first person because no one actually knows how uh, the, the the consumers would react, right? If they would know for certain that they could get away with that price well, discrimination, just, cut out scalpers. This? Doesn't that work? Sorry? It aren't, isn't that what like focus test groups are for? Like to figure out how the consumers would react? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, no, they they aren't as perfect. But, uh, even companies those make some yeah. astoundingly yeah. stupid fucking decisions sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, like and blind. even if the consumer test group thinks it's okay, like uh, the, the market as a whole might not react that way, right? You don't know if there's going to be like one uh, one bad story or something. That, a hit piece. Yeah. 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 that brings the narrative that way, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, actually, maybe no. It's better across the board because all that profit that would have potentially, like, I guess right now we know roughly what the value of a PS5 should be, right? People are willing to pay around fifteen hundred bucks, yeah. or, or sorry, a thousand dollars right now, right? I think a little bit higher for some, but. That's the value right now of PS5. So you kind of, yeah, I mean, I'd rather that that delta between the price that you pay at Best Buy and that would go to Doctors Without Borders versus going to, uh, you know, just some fucking... Yeah, sure. And if yeah. you wanted to take that argument through, well, then Sony should never release yeah, any consoles at all to any physical retailers, right? Because uh, each one of those retailers who sells a PS5, they're getting a slice of the money, right? Well, right. they're not adding uh, any value either. Uh, because Sony could just like ship it to you. Uh, well, and, actually, well, they should. They, now, they don't. Right? I don't think they get money. I know that sounds weird. I don't think you make money. On, no, I don't think they make money on selling them. I think they sell like they a lot of these big ticket items that bring people into the stores. I'm fairly certain that they do that to bring you into the store, Interesting. and that they actually like. I don't want to say they lose money, but they actually might lose sell money on some of those purchases. Yeah, or cost. I mean, there's a lot of there's literally a reason they have things called loss leaders like they did that at costco with the uh um the fuck is it called uh those chickens that they sell like oh, the, the whole, rotisserie like, chickens yeah like they lose they lose money um so it's not like they're making profit on it but you know people I mean? come in for those rotisserie chickens exactly. and then they buy a bunch of other shit well it's just like selling a console they lose money in the consoles but they make money in eventually because people buy fucking games right yeah right so i i don't give a shit if they sell it to whatever and I, in fact i don't care about this argument at all it's stupid the only reason it's awesome is because it pisses people off so much because they only the only thing they they hate more than landlords are scalpers but oh did you see met. i was getting quote oh. tweeted by like um some fucking like harvard professor <laughs> <laughs> on that on my scalping tweet he's like do people really do this or whatever or is this normal <laughs> wait do you have any idea what i'm referring to nope. no oh fuck no. you guys don't watch my tweet oh i tweeted out earlier that me and melina were having a big argument because melina says oh, that in that europe one. they only tip their landlords uh five, um or they tip their landlords 15 percent. and i said you should only tip five to ten percent max but melina was saying it was because rent was cheaper in europe they tipped higher percentages so what do you guys think and then <laughs> people uh <laughs> I got a lot of quote tweets pretty mad at me about that one. I thought it was pretty funny. Wait, people thought that was serious? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not... Your landlord. It's frisky business, being in, like, the landlord gamer scalper business. Right it's, about as, it's about as spicy as it can possibly get yeah. uh, to be in that space. I mean, just hold on to your hats if you're going in there, all right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's a new... You know how they have the Love for Landlords subreddit? <laughs> yeah. They have the love for scalpers one now, and it's fucking <laughs> really good. Oh no! Oh That's god! Uh, it's really, nice. really good. You go in there, and it's like, "What's up, uh, fellow scalper chads?" Today, 
uh, I sold a box to someone for eight hundred dollars. Here's the conversation where they get really mad when they find out there's no PS5 in it. <laughs> oh shit! Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Antinatalist kids are just depressed kids that like philosophy is like the fucking bandage for their depression.